And we are live. Fantastic. Well, Yay. sorry we started a bit later than normal, but I did call that extra half hour. That's exactly how much time I needed. Uh, it has been a crazy week, and I apologize to everybody that we started a bit late. Um, but everything's set. We're ready to go. Um, we did kind of a wrap-up of last session off-camera, but I guess we can do another one real quick. Um, essentially, everybody got kind of a plot hook last session. Um, hmm. There was a lot of very interesting, intense moments. Um, first off with uh, Othrix trying to scry the nature of the magic uh, stick that he found um, with Athalia and Garrett, I'm sorry, Athalia and Halas providing little to no help um, by putting mud and sticks into his uh, crest, trying to encourage him to be one with nature. So he made no headway. Um, Varys got lost, literally, um, in an effort to find Shadal. Um, everybody came back to interrogate the tiefling, um, found out that she was a corrupted follower of Shadal, um, a druid that spoke of entropy and the, the final path that all must walk. Um, Being as edgy as edgy could get. Yeah, we're talking like My Chemical Romance level of edgy here. Um, she attempted to escape using her druid powers, was quickly subdued. Um, also, she managed to get a puff of blighted ash in everybody's face. Uh, we found out mm -hmm. that Varys is immune to this, and everybody else isn't. They just got very lucky with all of their roles. Um is quite the scare for everybody, which caused at least two mental breakdowns, one of which from our friend Othrix here, who was contemplating their final words of Cull coming back, potentially. Um, <laughs> once he finally recognized what the, the, the saying was, he kind of broke down. Uh, Bia having her own crisis of near death, and then encountering two not one, but two gods who want her as her, their champions, um, who happen to be on opposite ends of the spectrum, being the goddess of storms, Sophris, and the goddess of the sea, Emra. Either um, way, I'm screwed around boats. Yep. <laughs> so, and they're jealous types, too, which makes it even better. Um, then we had uh, Athalia uh, literally pulling Bia back out of the water and running smack dab into her cousin, um, which has come from a land far away with which to make contact with her. Huge um, tracts of land. Mm. Huge tracts of land. Uh, it's hard to tell if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, but Bia, I'm sorry, but Athalia, who's been on the run for, what, 150 years out of character? Something, Something like, like that. that. Um, it's a great surprise to see one of her own out here. I think... Oh, no. Then Othrix and Hallis ran into one of Hallis's old buddies, who's representing the Lost House of um, Dragonborn, who deal in relics and illegal collections and things of the like, who somehow have found out that they have an Akrako coin in their possession and made a very strong attempt with which to get it back. Uh, they have a timer on an offer that basically says, give us the coin and we'll pay you, or give us the coin and we're going to break your legs. Um, Don't worry, we're going to break the legs first. <laughs> so, I think that's everybody. Did I miss anything? Uh... Oh yes, you also told Lord Drac that you all... Uh, encountered the Oaken Hand, and the Oaken Hand requested his presence with which to size him up. Yep. Yeah, that was what I was about to say. So, perfect. And then I believe we ended on everybody slowly tipping their cups back and drinking whatever was in their cups at the Black Cello, because now everybody had a lot to think about. <laughs> and more reasons to drink. <laughs> so... We will come back into session uh, with the morning after. Um, There's going to be a Drac morning did say after. that uh, he would meet you with vexation at the northernmost gate. Uh, the Oaken Hand did request that you bring him to the same altar that you met him at. All right. Uh, yeah. So. Be as hungover. 
<laughs> Why doesn't everybody roll me a constitution check, please? There it is. Uh, is this a save? Constitution, or just... you say? Constitution. Is this a save or just straight up check? Just uh, check. No, save. We'll do save. Hello. Woo. Fuck <laughs> yeah. Holy crap. All right, Varys. Um, for some reason, you didn't sleep super well. Just not restful. Um, you kept having flashes of various images flow through your mind of your time back in the Underdark. Um, you had a couple flashes of Shadal. You had a couple flashes of the corrupted symbol that was around the Druid's neck, um, as well as Calm. Um, and I don't know. You just you feel sympathy for the fact that they you don't think they still have any sleep. So you didn't get a whole lot of rest last night. Everybody else, though, you slept like children, at least to an extent. I slept like a log. <laughs> My God. Yeah. You, of all the things you're fantastic at, Josh, you are fantastic <laughs> at sleeping. Woo! I took that as a feat. So as you uh, as you come down from your rooms, various as they are, um, we have let me oh. get my there we go uh, the proprietus um, does already have a small spread ready for you um, the she's a slight woman with red hair that's tucked under a bonnet there's a couple messy tangles that pop out that belays her uh, that matches kind of her nervous uh, kind of church mouse nature uh, you guys have noticed but um, she does manage to take care of everything and while she's not exactly the most confrontational person ever she does run a pretty good ship um she has uh breakfast ready for y'all in the form of of some eggs and sausage that she managed to procure from the market this morning as well as some uh some root veggies oh what, whatever god may you pray to may they bless you oh thank you she gives a sweet smile Arthrix digs in how about the rest of y'all? What you doing? Eating mm -hmm. breakfast. Mm -hmm. Slowly but surely eating as much food as I can with a distant, tired look. Alice sees no problems and is just digging away his food. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it is getting close to time to meet Drac. Uh, do you guys want to make any stops before you go to the, the main gate? Oh, we've had a full night's rest, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank God. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, a long rest considered for any of your abilities. My luck's back. Oh, my boy. <sighs> um, I mean, we may be getting some difficulty. Do we want to try to see if we can pick up any potions or something on the way out? Yeah. Don't wait. You still have a handful, don't you, Mads? That you bought from. Um... Yeah, I have three common healing potions, and then another common healing potion, with three of them that'll make food taste bland for a day, and one that will not. <laughs> I've got two uh, common potions. I'm just saying, if anybody else wants them. Because we may be getting into th some shit. I know a guy. And wife. Of a guy. Would you guys like to make a stop at the, the store of Welge and Havgard Gelstein? Yeah. Mm, I think four is probably enough, but whatever. I mean, just to see, just also to see what they might have. Shopping takes Othric's minds off of things. Of course. So you guys go to uh, the just the alchemist shop. Unfortunately, Havgard does not seem to be the creative muscle of the pair. <laughs> um, so as you go in, though, again, once as we described with uh, with 
Mads as she uh, she walked into the shop with Bia. Um, there are literally shelves upon shelves upon shelves of potions, just arranged literally all around any space that can fit them. Um, different colors, shimmers, shines, you know, dull. One looks like it has a skull floating in it. Uh, in a mason jug, but you're not sure how it got in there, considering the neck's about a thumb wide. All types of, of different um, different types of uh, bottles floating around. and Weld just looks up and sees all of you walk in, and her face just absolutely brightens. This rather, I don't want to say rotund woman, but she's pretty husky. Um, she has definitely lived a good life for sure, but she's just got that natural matronly smile as she, she perks up and sees Bia again. It's, oh, you've brought friends this time. Absolutely amazing. I love it when you come in, my dear. Having only been in once. <laughs> mm. Yep. Mm. Brought friends. We're Guys, looking for more that? potions. Everybody looks so good. Are, uh, there's a lot of armor. Are you adventurers? Oh, I, my husband used to be an adventurer. Just the highest cow. Always scared me shitless. But he was such a he was such a brave man. I absolutely adored him. Throwing potions together on the fly. You're probably going to have to interrupt her if you want anything. Perhaps this is a conversation held over tea another day, but today I'm afraid we've got adventuring to do and potions to buy. Oh, you're here to shop. Oh, I thought this was just a social visit. My apologies. Um, What do you need? We have all kinds of things. I have potions that can turn people into dogs, make them taste like dogs, make them smell like dogs. I don't know why there's a sudden fascination with dogs, but Havgard's been on a roll lately. I tend not to question it. Uh, we also have different things that can make food, any food, taste absolutely amazing. We have different, uh, we can make ink out of nothing. We can make gold out of lead. There's all kinds of potions that, again, you are probably going to have to interrupt her uh, to get uh, it. Uh, pardon me, ma'am. Ma uh, uh, do you happen to have any potions of healing that uh, may be more powerful than just your run-of-a-mill <clears throat> potion? Oh, sure. Let me check and see what we have. Uh, she pulls out a very large ledger. Um, and... She does... Uh, she kind of runs her finger down it and taps it twice. Yes! Yep. Oop. Hello? Hello? Ah, damn it, I hate when this happens. Gosh. <laughs> Sorry about that. It just, you, you literally just cut out when you said yes. Yes, yes. She has, um, she has a, a triangular large flask. It will probably take a good portion of a, um, like a part of a backpack. Um, pretty oh, tall. Um, if you could do me a huge favor and roll me a D100, please. Oh, geez. Okay. It's like the Pulp Cthulhu game all over again. 96 okay um so she she swirls it around a little bit and you can see that a small shimmer of gold runs up the the red uh the red liquid Ooh. and she holds it out to you and says this this is one of Havgard's better creations. Not only does it heal any minor wounds that are occurring on you, um, sc cuts, scratches, eh, some minor broken bones, but it also will make you feel reinvigorated. Uh, we sold this to a baron the other week, and he reported fantastic results from his uh, from his mistress. We'll just we'll leave it at that. I won't get too scandalous with it. I mean, placebos um, do wonderful things for people. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so you will be getting a potion of greater healing mm. um, if you want to pay for it. Uh, uh, and yes, how much would the cost be? Crap. <laughs> I hate this uncommon, common thing. It's fucking bullshit. Well, you didn't want tables full of magic items, so... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Flip, flip. I 
gotta like bookmark this damn thing. There we go. All right, it is gonna cost you approximately 120 gold pieces to buy. Because oh, not only does it heal um, as a greater potion, um, which is in is it 187. Yeah, I'll look it up. It's okay. I got it. It's right here. It's in my hands already. Um. Greater healing does 44 plus 4 HP, but um, it is a greater potion of vigor, so it also gives you 2d4 plus 4 temporary life points when you drink it. Ooh, 2d4 plus 4 temp HP. Okay. Correct. Yep, but it's 120 gold pieces. I will. Uh, yes, I will definitely take that. Oh, wonderful. Bia, you bring such wonderful people into my store, I swear. We will have to catch up with tea. Is there anything else I could interest you all in? We have all sorts of things. I have a, slaf a flask of Quicksilver that will coat you in armor, but we're not sure exactly what it does to your insides yet. There was a gentleman who came in and we had to pass him a bucket, but he seemed okay, at least when he left. I haven't really seen him in a couple weeks, though. Uh, I probably shouldn't be talking to you about these things. Um... So eh. What do you guys want to look for? Got anything for bee stings? In case we encounter more. <laughs> bee stings? Um, like allergies. <laughs> Bia shoots a look at everyone. <laughs> I, I... We might have something small, but I... Uh, it's not really something that we come into contact with super frequently be fine <laughs> what to say, oh it's for you, you. So. oh i feel like there's a story behind this but i'm not what's the story come on you can tell me i'm not gonna tell I'm probably gonna giant tell bees them. don't worry about it he almost got killed by them very they nice. were large did you not see them they were big <laughs> they got squished pretty easily i think you might have an allergy there or something undiagnosed about to say yes i just cast a fireball and they went poof that's a fireball, you son of a bitch. God, that sounds so frightening. Oh, Havergard used to have to deal with things like that. There was one time he went into a swamp. Again, you guys are probably going to have to interrupt her if you want to get out of here. There's one time that he went into a swamp where there's these giant leeches, and he said that one just caught him in the... Oh, look I... at the time. Look at the time. I'm sorry. <laughs> I believe I, I believe Lord Drax is waiting for us at the gate. We m mustn't keep him waiting, you know, the Lord and his uh, temper and all that. Thank you very much. Quite. Uh, we will come back again if we need anything. <laughs> if, we need, if we need anything. Thank you. Good day. And he just bolts out the door. Hal has already left. Yeah, <laughs> that fucking stealth check, though. I take it everybody else is going to follow. Yeah, mm -hmm. is going to nod for a while, realize she's the only one there, and <laughs> slip out. <laughs> so you hear her waving, you know, saying and waving goodbye in her very long-winded way. Uh, well, she's a wonderful woman, but unfortunately long-winded. Um as you guys get out, it, it, not a lot of time has passed. You've managed to find the alchemist shop pretty quickly. Um, going from, let's get you back to Silvershore map here, or Stromness map. Going from Circle Fire, uh, you have to meet Lord General Drac at Stoneside. Um, so you guys would probably just make best taste just walking through the bridges that are there. Um, I take it you're going straight there? Um, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, as you as you arrive, you see um, the Lord General standing in a a large um, light coat. Oh, I want to get his hand out again, so everybody remembers what he looks like. He's the very model of a modern major general. <laughs> He's also standing with Gabriel, who has a uh, his traditional servant's outfit on. Uh, but you see a very familiar hat and horns standing next to him uh, as they are all waiting for you. It doesn't seem like they've been waiting super long, but Vexation uh, has lit a, uh, a long pipe and is currently smoking it. Othrix waves excitedly at Vexation. 
Hey, Sarge, if I remember correctly, did I buy those goggles or not? I can't recall. You did not. Not yet. Darn. <laughs> Though you did give the Lord General Drac a good laugh about it. Uh... Um, so as I, as you approach, Vexation gives a, a nod to Authorix as he waves excitedly, and Lord, Lord General turns around and nods as well. Gentlemen, ladies... Thank you for arriving. I appreciate you providing escort on this. Um, it's very interesting to see what the Oaken Hand has to say. I largely thought he was a myth for the most part, but you learn new things every day, I find. I just don't laugh at him when you see him. You won't like it. Uh, Bia, you notice that Gabriel comes over to your side of the group and very subtly hands you a small package i open it like it's christmas day it is the goggles it's the goggles with darkened lenses i am putting them on immediately because i see vexation and i'm not sure how it works <laughs> <laughs> gabriel just smiles to himself shaking his head and uh folds the, the wrapping up nice and neat and puts it in his back pocket and Drac um, is also smiling. Vexation just shakes his head with a sly smirk and turns around and keeps smoking his pipe. I am parading like a proud peacock who has no idea what's going on right now. Varus is doing his best to keep a straight face. <laughs> Why? Nobody else is? <laughs> uh, so, um, the, the Lord General kind of nods to Vexation. Are, are you taking you all already? Oh, y y yes. Yes. Yep. Excellent. Let's let's head out then. I, as I understand it, Vexation doesn't like to show his unique traits to anyone at the guard facility. Oh, uh, Vexation kind of just shrugs a little bit and starts walking. Well, people, I'm surprised he shows them to you, since you're kind of the boss around here. I think he's being very responsible, since he wouldn't want to have a bunch of those things running around if everybody was looking at him and turning into him. <laughs> I, I mean, you can, see, you can see Vexation, who has paced ahead a little bit. His shoulders start shaking as though he's snickering. I mean, I don't understand. It is just a simple invocation uh, and uh, tra transmutation spell. There's, it is maybe a little bit more complex than uh, that most people are useful, but used to. But I don't understand why he, he should be hidden. I mean, uh, Drac paces you for a moment, Othrix. Um, you do remember that he is a very talented wizard. Um, and for a moment, it's he just listens to how you're, you're talking and slowly puts a hand on your shoulder and says, if there's one thing, Othrix, that I've learned through my years uh, as a wizard of some renown, it's that sometimes you just can't explain things. You can try. And that's what the source of our magic comes from. But sometimes you're not going to be able to. Vexation is named that for a reason, I find. I, he still puzzles me to this day. Well, then definitely more research is required. Oh, I agree. Try and get that past him, though. Bless your heart, Arthrex. <laughs> <laughs> he claps you on the shoulder once. Not, not fatherly, but almost like compatriot you, you're not a, quite an equal but you know you, you shared a moment there <laughs> and uh proceeds to continue gabriel is is no longer with you guys having waved goodbye to his uh to his uh, charge um and is heading back to the to the castle tracks you guys get a good good step out from the gates it's no longer totally visible what's going on there and Vexation stops, very pointedly looks at Othrix, and then turns around and quickly takes the amulet off and tosses it on the ground. Can I make another like uh, perception check to see how this works? You will be taking disadvantage on the check. Uh, fine. Let's let's do this. Uh, of course, I have nothing in that skill. This is going to be funny. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah. 
Oh yeah, you did it with advantage. What? He well, rolled no... the 19 first, though. What? How did I yeah, do but you can hover over the number, oh. and it'll show you both of the results. So you made uh, an eight with it. Okay, never mind. I'm sorry. Nah, he rolled the 19 first. He rolled the 19 actually. first, Sarge. Yeah, right. but it's disadvantage, disadvantage, so it takes the lower. Takes the lowest. Yeah. Mm. Doesn't matter which is first. Yeah, sorry about that. I lowest. thought I had dis no, disadvantage. Good. Yeah, that's that's why I like being able to see the the statistics. Yeah, so with an eight, um, he does it quickly enough that you're still paying attention to Drax and just barely catch it out of the corner of your eye. I start grumbling in Draconic. <laughs> and of course, the uh, <laughs> it transforms into the nightmare carriage once again. It's becoming a familiar sight. The uh, the horses aren't as restless as they were. You still can't hear them breathing, but they don't seem to be as agitated as they normally are. Uh, DM? Hmm? Dia would like to take a single blade of grass and stick it in between one of the wagon wheels and then nod appreciatively and step back. Okay. Oh, Bia. I kind of want to get it so it'll stick there. So it'll be there when we arrive. <laughs> Everybody's kind of just watching you for a moment. At least the NPCs. I'm not sure if anybody else is interested in, in watching this. But Arthur, at least... a note. I'll stare. Everyone stares. <laughs> just kind of watching you do it. Silently. Nobody says anything. Scribbles in my note. And now we can arrive unaccosted by pixies. I don't think that's how that works. You see, Lord Drac is is kind of speechless for a moment. He's very much struggling to find something to say. Vexation's eyes kind of widen a little bit, and he turns around in that okay kind of motion. Like, crazy person, great. Mm. And proceeds to Pixies. jump up. They are dangerous on these roads. <laughs> oh, are they? Oh, okay. Well, then maybe we should set up a, a scout. Oh, I, I would love to capture one. Oh, it would be great. No, no, no. no, no, no. You don't no, want to capture one. No, you don't capture pixies. They get you. They get all in your head, and next thing you know, uh, you're singing the sugar plum fairy, fairy somewhere in the woods, and they're using your blood for tea. Yeah, that's why you gotta put grass there so you confuse them. They think you're just the wind. Because you're blowing grass about. They can't see man-made objects. Authors is just furious. That's why I think it's so notes. funny. They think we're always walking around naked and whatnot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Huh. Explains why they're always laughing. Drac kind of looks between you all, just disbelieving for a moment that this conversation is legitimately happening. I'm not with them in this. <laughs> it just proceeds to get into the cabin. I don't feel bad even for a second <laughs> that I'm just egging Bia on. Uh, Bia's gonna get into the cart, yeah. nodding, pleased with herself. Authrix gets in. She's going to explain the finer points of pixie avoid avoidance to uh, Authrix. And he is just furiously taking notes right now. So you have to carry an iron nail with you if you want to avoid the ones that are tall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. But you need pebbles for the short ones. Is there a cutoff height that, that, that defines the tall and the short? So as you guys get into the, the carriage and proceed on your way, um, it takes around the same amount of time um, since you're going to the same location, probably about four or five hours. Um, manage to get through fairly unaccosted much to be as delight uh no fairies show up um but she's trying to decide i should i shouldn't no i shouldn't say that um it is still quiet except for the, the wheels of the carriage hitting the ground um but as you arrive at that little uh the little village the three houses that you guys initially pulled up to last time um Drac looks around and says, "This is this this is the place that you all were before, if I remember your report correctly. Yes, this is where you went from." Yes. 
Okay, well, let us yep. depart here, and we'll go on foot. Vixation, thank you. You may uh, rest, and of course, this is all paid time. He nods appreciatively as he waits on everybody to get out. Does everything seem normal at this place? Yeah, as far as you guys can tell. I mean, there's still people in the inn. It's probably about midday now. Um, a couple, a couple of the farmers are chilling in the end. You see the uh, the proprietress in the back that you talked with before, and almost racially offended the drow um, until he proved that he was an okay sort. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same place. No, nothing's really changed. Okay. And we move onward and forward. All right. Would somebody like to make me a navigation check? Is that even a thing? No, there's survival. That's the closest thing. Survival someone... or nature in order to try to relocate the shrine. I have a plus four to survival unless someone can beat that. Could we um, make something like a wisdom test to remember? Yeah, you certainly could. Cool. Everybody can make a check. Just pitch it to me. Uh, I've got plus three in nature, so I'll do that. I'll do I check. have plus three in survival. Can I help anybody? I have a plus four in survival. You can help me. Well, that's a yep. no. So go ahead. I've got a plus what? four in survival, so someone enjoy that. Make a crit. I don't think it's necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me that advantage won't help. <laughs> I mean, you can you still... Could roll you... double 20s. Yeah, you could roll double 20s and get there all that faster. <laughs> so, Bia, go ahead and roll. Thank you, Varys, for carrying this party. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the opposite. Jesus H. Christ. Oh, man. This is why you don't let me roll for things that are nice or important. <laughs> okay. So right. my ruck, luck runs ironic. You made it funnier for it to be a one, Sarge. <laughs> so, Varys, you're you're pretty sure. You're almost like a hundred percent sure that you can, even through the darkness, you can recall where it is, or at least the direction that you guys started out in. It's the calls from the other three people that are going, no, no, that, no, that's, I don't recognize that stump. That's, what are well, you talking about? Well, of course about? you don't recognize the stump. You were too busy bleeding out of your eyes from everything the druids did to you. Well, no, I do remember this was the place I had to go, well, get off the track and uh, uh, relieve myself. So I definitely remember this place. I don't know. I don't like to look yeah. at those mushrooms. They could be cursed. We should go Bia, the other way. Yeah, we rode in a cursed courage to get here. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to go soak yourself in holy water when we get out of here, or enough salt water if you can find it. But yeah, yeah, cursed carriage. Curse ain't the problem right now. You can't have two like, curses at once. Don't you know this? I feel like B would go. I am two steps ahead of you on that. <laughs> salt water bath. Two steps ahead. I have my salt water on me at all times. That is not enough to bathe someone like you. <laughs> it's better now. It's concentrate. That's that's what? not how that works. <laughs> Just carry a pile of salt. It's salt water concentrate. Just add water. But Precisely. Did... Yeah, don't you know two curses can't cancel each other out? Right now we're fine. We've got the curse of the carriage and none of us looked, so we're safe. Oh, boy. All right. So, <laughs> you guys, Ferris, you do struggle with your crit. Uh, you do get them a bit farther than they would by themselves. You're, you're fairly certain they would fall into a ravine, even though they're in a forest with no ravines in it, if you had left them by themselves. Um, you do manage They'd to... They'd find to... a ravine. <laughs> We'd make one and then fall in it. <laughs> it, takes, it takes about an extra hour than it did last time because you guys are consistently bickering um, about whatever comes across your path but you do eventually make it there um, it is starting to get a little further into the afternoon uh, Lord Haverford looks to be uh, a bit annoyed with the progress 
but if he's he doesn't let anything slip um he just kind of lets you do your thing since he he doesn't know where it is so good man good man. close that out go to here ah i remember this place yep so as you come up um told you it was this way look at that it's from the lost episode <laughs> oh yeah that's right you didn't get the fucking amazing fight yeah i know <sighs> the one fight i was actually really useful in and i because the audio quality was just so messed up mm -hmm. damn it, it sucks yeah i know use obs and the updated in fact all the settings so you guys yeah. recognize the hunting trail that you're on. Does anybody want to make any checks? See if there's traps. People. I want to roll perception. I want to. Yeah, see just general perception, perception to make sure. Okay. <laughs> um, Lexi's still gone, I assume. No, no. She didn't say anything. No, I'm here. Okay, good. I saw you say BRB. I didn't see anything else. No, uh, I just had to grab something from the other room. God, gotcha. Lexi, don't you know you got to say it back when you get back? It's like yeah. only one of us knows you're here. <laughs> We're just I figured playing. nothing important was going to come up in the 30 seconds I was gone. Um, so, Athalia, Varys, what are you guys up to? Mm, general perception check. Okay. Varys? Uh, yada da. Let's see, what, what do I want to do? Ooh. Hello. You know what? Divine Sense is probably safe. Those guys were evil as fuck before. Yeah. I'm just... So, you can find you read it. that off for me real quick? I can do one better. Yes. You find yes. a somewhat evil badger. <laughs> this thing has fucked some people up. You don't even know. <laughs> You don't know why, but to have an aura that bad... No, I'm kidding. Um, Celestial Fiend or Undead. You feel... The area is still desecrated. Um, as it had been when you guys approached it last time with the druids it doesn't feel like it's been redistribute uh, re um purified re thank you purified back to Kalim standards or to sanctified to re sanctified to Kalim. um but you you're pretty sure it's the same place you don't get a good read on any good or bad either way um there's nothing super strong standing out to you just the desecration. It always... It feels kind of grimy every time you walk into this circle. Like, the, like it's... Uh, the humidity is almost like oil in this area. Gross. Oh, so we're in Virginia now, right. But just for John. Because he's got that divine sense. This place is gross, and there's so many things wrong with it. <laughs> but we are here, so. So, we have the rest of the perception checks. Between Athalia and Hallis, um, you guys aren't seeing anything. You're not hearing anything out of the ordinary um, as far as... Um... Oh, man, I'm sorry. I'm trying to... Words just are escaping me tonight. Everything seems normal. You don't see any traps. There's no obvious like bear traps hidden anywhere or snares. Um, you're not getting the sense that obvious hiding places are filled. Um, the only the thing in the trees. Good, good, yeah. good. The only thing that you're picking up on though is there's a complete lack of wildlife around. It's quiet. Super quiet. Yeah. Too quiet. It's because of that one badger. <laughs> Yeah, that he, one badger's an asshole. He murdered and ate the rest of them. Um, but yeah, as you, uh, Bia, you're looking in exactly the wrong places. Um, 
the fairies got you spooked. There's <laughs> mushrooms in all the wrong spots. It's not good. Yeah, Othrix, it's it's not that you're not looking in the right places. You're just it's doesn't fall into place for you. You think you're being thorough. There is nothing bad here at all. I'm sure of this. That's a nice tree. That's a nice tree. <laughs> that's a nice tree. Ooh, an oh, this elm. one's got scratches. Oh, that's just natural scratches. Okay. Ooh, Probably an elm. <sighs> Probably a badger. I so... try to warn you people that shit's evil out here. <laughs> <laughs> so Drac looks over at Varys. Um, and for a moment kind of pauses as he looks at you and you can tell that he's not exactly he's not judging you by any means but he's almost he's he's bemused put it that way when he looks at you he says, can I help you Haverford I'm just contemplating the uh the oxymoronic nature of this. Uh-huh. I mean, we're well, not you're... lost in the woods. He's fine currently. He's... Uh, uh, make me a charisma check. Is there, wait, is there like a insight? I think there is an insight. There is an insight. Yes, there is. It's called insight. Yes. <laughs> That's why I asked. <laughs> Would you mind rolling that one for me, John? Um, you can tell that he's... It, it, again, he's not judging you. You think it might have to do with the fact that you're a good paladin as a drow. And the fact that you're you're the one that's kind of, you know, sensing the evil in the area. He can kind of reflect on that, too. But it's just more of a passing thought of, huh, who would have thought? A drow is a paladin. And he's a good one, too. Fucking racist. You're the only fucking drow, and they're known to be slavers and murderers. You can't really blame them. You're a credit to I your mean... race, Gunga Din. <laughs> he's one of the good ones. It's Thank like you it, all. Thank it's you. It's like if one fucking Genghis Khan Mongolian was super nice to everybody, and they're like, "That's a good Mongolian," and every you still think the rest of them are assholes because they fucking pillaged your family and wrecked your shit. But that one's really nice. Ahem. He Racist. has only raped two of my sisters. <laughs> Jesus. I. Ugh. So. Um, he, he walks toward the altar, and you can kind of tell John, uh, Varys that he he feels a little bit of the same. He's very obviously uncomfortable um, as he walks over to the uh, the altar that's here. And he kind of looks up at it and starts reaching out and, and, and running his hand over the inscription that's on it. It's a um, some old, old text that is essentially just almost um, – actually – can who wants to study the the language? Hi there. That's written in. Uh, yo. Uh, roll me what you I'd think. I'd love to do so uneventfully. <laughs> what would you like to roll for it? Uh, t -t 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 can I do history and see if I've heard of any like tale, tall tales, or any sailors speaking something that looked like that or writing their name funky like that? Maybe. Did you did you really just say speak in something that looks like that? <laughs> yes, yes, I did. <laughs> Does Via suddenly have subtitles on the world? Oh, I always have I subtitles mean, turned on. I mean, Via needs. I'd argue Via <laughs> needs subtitles. Oh. So, for ten minutes, I will cast uh, Comprehend Language as a ritual. And as long as I'm touching the surface, I can understand any written language. Okay, as a ritual. That takes a longer period of time. Do you have the spell components for it? Ooh, hang I would on. assume that you normally do. Probably. Uh, a pinch of soot and salt. Yeah, I definitely have that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do if you don't. Currently in a jar. <laughs> <laughs> There's extra stuff with it, but she's got both of them. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's glowing. You creepily. also you also understand any written language that you see, but you must be touching the surface on which the words are written 
takes about one minute to read a page. Blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, I can cast right. that as a ritual. Hey, Sarge, can I still make that history check? You may absolutely do so. Uh, was any, does anybody else want to uh, follow on that one? What language is it? Because I know... Well, that's what my name the is... test for. I'm living up to my name tonight. Bad luck, Mia. Oh my god. <laughs> what the hell? Hashtag Mia, obvious... no. It's obviously druidic for destroy the stone. Obviously. Uh, what is the time to cast for that, Josh? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, ritual is ten minutes. No, I, it's ten minutes longer than normal. So, what's the? Is it a bonus action? Is it a regular action? Uh, it, it's casting time one action. One action. Total. So yeah. Okay. Take ten minutes and six seconds. Six seconds is gonna get me killed. Okay. Obviously, you do have it prepared because you're a sorcerer. All right, cool. Doesn't take up a spell slot. Um, yeah, so you guys, um, how would you cast this as a ritual? Describe it to me. Me? I just, you, you see me. Stone, all sensual like. Don't put words. Oh my God. I could, all Don't I put think words into my mouth. All I can think of is that fucking black chef from Britain who's just rubbing his me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fucking Ainsley, that's his name, Jeff Ainsley. I was literally about to say, I take the soot and the salt and just start rubbing my hands together with it. <laughs> and then... Oh, bitch. Damn it. And then start running my hands, like, almost like unseeing over the surface of the rock. And start muttering to myself the incantations. Mm, yeah, you're a good rock. <laughs> okay. Who's a good rock? Who's a good rock? This is a um, nice boulder. So Drac, Drac watches. He doesn't say anything as you you uh, begin your ritual. Um, I bet you Drac knows what it says. <laughs> uh, Bia, you are a hundred percent convinced that this is a um, uh, a gravestone. Because there's no way that somebody would have brought a rock like this that's not native to this area to this place unless it was for the grave of a very powerful person. Get your kit. We're going grave robbing. <laughs> and you're doing all of this while Othrix is trying to prepare. Uh, just going into lore and legend and like, oh, it could be this type of person. I've heard stories about this and um, you start getting Athalia kind of worked up because Athalia also knows these lore and legends that you're talking about. And uh, there's, there's a kind of a, uh, an interest from the party, if you will. Um, Othrix is ignoring the lot of you, I would assume, while he's trying to do his ritual. Othrix don't care. Othrix, as you take your, your salt and ash-smeared hands and place them up against the, uh, the stone itself... Um, you hear a deep, unending voice echo in your head. Oh, fuck. That is almost... You feel the immense nature of eternity. That of patience and um, fortitude start to echo through your head. As it rumbles um, a chant to... Praise Kalim um, for his um, to challenge us and to to bring us higher than we are. You realize this is written in elemental, hmm. um, as it's chiseled out into it, and you feel like the the depth of um, eternity has to do something with maybe some type of earth elemental. This is this is old of elemental language of praises and worship to Kalim of prayers of strength of might of struggle against 
the forces of nature, of gods and men. So not the gravestone of a lost captain. Got it. What? No, no, where did you even get that from? <laughs> I love it. Drac just kind of smiles at that for a moment and just scratches his nose. Good job, Othrix. And you hear a voice behind all of you that says, um, Josh, you can comprehend elemental language, right? Oh, now, yeah. because of this? Yeah, I okay. just cast it, so I'm good. You hear, there, it kind of, the voice in your head kind of stopped after a moment where the writing stopped. It looks like it had been scratched off and broken, pieces of it fell out. Mm -hmm. But you hear the same kind of voice come from behind you as it continues the worship, basically saying that by pitting us against each other in competition, we can better ourselves to better the world that nature is merely one other thing to overcome in becoming the best versions of ourselves none of that was written down uh I this not anymore i think we are not hi alone. oaken hand <laughs> you see up on the top of the hill up here uh kind of he walks away and you can f you just see he looks like moss he just blended in perfectly to one of the trees and he starts coming down the uh the side of the rocks as though they were made of stairs uh even though it's essentially like a 20 foot tall sheer cliff he just travels down it like a goat um eventually coming to a stop in front of you all and saying it was uh, he he looks at Othric specifically and goes i didn't you impress me, Dragonborn. That was a difficult chant to pick up on. I was just... He cheats. I do not oh, cheat. I say the it same was... thing. It was years <laughs> of study and trial. Just like a practiced grifter. Oh, damn. I don't know what that word means. It means a cheat. Same word. I do not cheat. I study. Drac puts a hand up uh, and bows toward the oaken hand. It is an absolute honor to meet you, Ancient One. The oaken hand kind of do doesn't seem to respond at all. He's just standing there with that crooked old staff that has the antlers tied on top of it with various charms hanging off of it and just seems to take you all in before finally settling back on Drac. Uh, I'm sorry, Tony. Can we get yes. the picture of Oakenhand again? Uh, dude, did I put one up last time? I don't nope. think I did. No, you did. Uh, well, we saw We've it. We've never had a picture of Oakenhand. Yes, you did. I remember you posted it. Yeah, you had a token. When we were here. Uh, no, I got it. Huh. There we go. Like, call me crazy, but I can definitely. No, nope, you, you're totally right. Um, let me throw that down on the token layer. There. there we go. Yep. Um, I should probably get back on the correct layer. Mm -hmm. There we go. Everybody see him okay? Yep. yep. Yeah. Fantastic. Yep, so the, the branches and uh, the, the very mossy colored cloak and hood that he has, um, as well as still being hidden behind his um, wooden mask as he just kind of takes you all in before finally turning back to Drac and pointing at him and saying, is this the one? Yes. I believe so. Are you sure? It's the one that we've talked to before. You God, said bring I us hope so. Lord Drac. We brought you Lord Drac. He starts very slowly pacing around Drac. Um, people make me our whoever has Arcana make me a check real quick. Hello, my baby. Insight, Hello, my honey. perception, whatever you guys want to do. Oh, perception. Making that insight. Yes. Not making that insight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was much better. Greater yeah. than one. <laughs> 
Be a greater than one. Uh, Athalia, would you like to make a check? No. No? I'm just going to watch him pace around? Okay. What do you think you should make? This guy is obviously sizing up Drac. You don't know if it's magical or anything like that. Maybe religious. If you have anything like that, you can roll those to see if there's an element of that to it. I guess I could try perception. Okay. Um, Varys, you were mm. you're mm. really focusing on his mask for the moment. It is super strange that people have are, are hiding their faces, and you're you're pretty distrustful of anybody that opts to live behind a mask. Um. So that's really kind of throwing off your any good assumption on your part. Um, you just I can tell that you don't like him. <laughs> he's very he's too cocky. Um, as for the rest of you, Athalia, with your perception, um, he's very even paced. It's not rushed. There's no attempt to get around him quicker. He doesn't seem to take any any time to stop and focus on one particular thing, but his stride is even the whole way around. Um, Bia, Hallis, you guys notice that he doesn't have any weapons on him. There's no... He keeps his hands pretty close to his side. There's no movement. You don't even hear him talking. He's just walking around. Again, very even-paced, very slow, taking everything in. Athrix... You have had this done to you before, oh boy. from an Arcana standpoint. He's sizing up Drax's abilities. He's looking far beyond him, and he's looking into realms that only other people can see. You're not sure if this guy's even human to be able to do that. Um, the last time, uh, the, the, the one time you had it done was in a specialty class relating around identifying magics and it was creepy as fuck you did not like it in the slightest <laughs> it was very invasive <laughs> um authors just so the okay. gets mm, kind of gets a little prepared but that's about it he oakenhand makes his kind of his round around him and stops two or three paces and just looks at him straight in the eyes no deviation and he says you're torn okay Drax seems a little surprised at that kind of pulls his head back uh, what there's too much going on in you to proceed you haven't conquered anything there's too much inner conflict in you you're not the drax i was looking for are there any other draxes we know because this is gonna go so well <laughs> do you have any brothers or sisters or wives we don't know about or <laughs> track flashes his hand out real quick at you guys yep. um he is very upset all of a sudden for good reason um but before he can retort the oaken hand continues that you're torn between two worlds this one and the one that's in your study you continue to fight amongst yourself kalim likes challenge he likes success You've been fighting the same battle for years. You must conquer yourself before Kalem will let you into his court. Does anybody want to make an insight check? I'll do it. I'll try. Okay. It's not going to be good, but I'll do it. Yeah, I'll try another one. Me. Oh, damn. Vera's bringing the big guns today. 
Pally on point. Okay, Hallis, you're he's calm as far as you can tell. He's wearing the same kind of stoic mask that he normally does. Um, you think everything's fine. Um, Othrix, Bia, Varys, you guys realize that everything is not fine. Drac is barely hanging on. He is almost visibly shaking. There's a small tremor in his right hand. As Did we bring Drac's sets. servant with him? Nope. No. Gabriel is back at the town. And Gosh. Vexation is back so at the village. So I'm going to get between the two of them. Real quick. Okay. What would you like to say? Maybe we need to take a minute and establish things a little. After all, you asked for Drac, and now you're saying he's not the correct Drac. I think you need to elaborate, and Haverford here needs to take a few moments to take it all in. I said nothing of the sort, Paladin. I said that he was not the right Drac. And Drac seems to... He seems to want to go through you at the moment. <laughs> I'm going to look back at him like, you can try, buddy. I'm... He probably would be able to, but I... <laughs> you we can, don't know um... that. You see heat shimmering from that right hand. Okay. I kind of come up beside him and just say... The Nonetheless, dog... Oak hand elaborate the god... what were you going to say Josh the, the gods are fickle we need to play their games if anything is to be done the gods roll dice with our lives I'm trying to help people I'm going to drag get the fuck over it I had to <laughs> that's not helping I'm about, to, I'm about to say <laughs> not helping not helping <laughs> You I want him some angry at someone other than Oakenhand, because that's diplomatic. That's a good point, actually. Um, if there's one thing I can do, it's make a man mad enough to forget he was mad enough at someone else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, there's there's a there's a method to my madness. Oakenhand doesn't seem to be phased by any of this. He. Kind of looks between you all as, as Drax is getting the equivalent of Hold me back! Hold me back! I'm gonna kill a bitch! <laughs> uh, and just kind of looks over all of you again until he settles on Athalia. Hmm? And you can see the eyes behind the mask squint just a moment as a single hand raises up to point at you. Oh, good. That's when there's a situation. You have a challenge that is worthy of Kalim. I'm just gonna stare. House. I don't. I don't know what to respond with. I, I think that's a pretty good fucking response at the moment. Just K. Okay. Kalim doesn't just do physical challenges, but you know that. The challenge of bringing family together hurts worse and is far harder than anything that can be asked physically. I'm going to kind of narrow my eyes and just keep staring. You received word of the turmoil in your house recently, yes? I'm just going to kind of tersely nod. To return a house to unity is a challenge worthy of the gods. No. Uh, sure. <laughs> there's, a small, so? there's a small nod. As he, Do you feel like he gave his point good enough? Yeah. Like, okay. Kind of nods to you. Looks over the rest of you again. I look forward to seeing you all again. At this point, Drac just blows up. Harder than you've ever seen him rage before. Like, at we, this well, point, we've never seen him rage. Yeah, that's so. true. Um, his hand literally explodes in fire at the moment, and he starts pulling back, yelling, How 
dare you insult my house like this? Do you know the sacrifices I've gone through? Is anybody going to step in? Oh, yeah. I immediately kind of, like, step between him and Oakenham. Alice. Also Same. Does. Yep. This is sweet. Well, I'm I backing all... up. I'm squishy. <laughs> <laughs> the human wall of HP is going to be uh, everybody cool. make that thing in front of that. Uh, dexterity check, please. Well, hi there. Including me, John. You get it with advantage. Yes, you too. A dexterity check, you said. A dexterity check with advantage, please, because you're already standing there, at least in between them. Okay. Nice. Not bad. Yeah, that goes just nope. about how I expected it to. Oh, boy. <laughs> Folly, you kind of stumble backwards and you catch a rock. Because it's very sudden. It's very explosive. Uh, um, and you weren't you weren't expecting Drac to lose it that badly. Um, so you kind of sprawl out underneath. Uh, Bia, Hallis, you guys just can't react fast enough. It's, again, completely out of left field. You, d you didn't even know this was possible with him. Um, however, Varys and Othrix. Varys, you... How would you like to, like, kind of keep him back for the moment? Since you're pretty much going to be the first one. Varys? Uh, I'm just going to stay between the two of them. Like, nope, 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 nope. Do you put a hand up? Do you try and, like, keep him back? Physically? I'm just going to look him dead in the eyes and, like, calm the fuck down, your lordship. Authrix? I I immediately, like, place a hand upon his shoulder and just l try to intercede myself in between them as well and just go, There, this is not the time for this. We do not have time for this. He doesn't seem to hear you. But your physical presence combined with uh, Varys seems to calm him down enough so that his hand isn't on fire anymore. Oh, good. You, you don't know what he was charging up, but Josh, you know that he is a lot more powerful than you are. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he kind of simmers down for a moment and turns around and walks away for, for a moment. Oakenhand just is again standing there, passive. Doesn't seem to be affecting him at all. Um, there's not even a crook to his head. <sighs> Wait a minute. He points to Othrix. Oh, shit. Your staff. Yes. You haven't figured it out yet, have you? I've been a bit distracted. And I look poignantly at two of our party members. Give it here. I Just holds out his hand. I do it without question, because right now I'm terrified of both of these people. How on edge is everybody that you just handed them a very powerful druid staff? Pretty. Yeah, about a four out of ten. I'm more concerned that uh, Drac is just gonna pop off between everything the pucker factor is at airtight <laughs> he... more worried about Drac himself than Oakenhand Oakenhand kind of holds the the staff in his hand he places his own against his shoulder and you get a good look at his actual Oakenhand for the first time in a little you know ever it's fully articulate with no joints. It's just completely, it's like an arm has been crafted out of the finest, uh, the finest uh, woodworker imaginable has created a lifelike human arm that just is just made out of wood. It looks gorgeous, polished, um, practically shining. Mahogany. And as you're watching he very quickly flips it around and slaps the tree next to him with the staff almost as like he's trying to break it okay. any reaction at all he just it looks like he just tried to break your stick i i just kind of go oh. hold out a hand spear up 
<laughs> you know, it'd be nice if you communicated what you were doing. He's if we're supposed to work together. He motions Arthrix over. And he points at the end of the staff, which is still up against the tree. I gingerly look at it. There's sap running down it. The tree has started to bleed. The stick itself is absorbing that sap. And the burned edges of that lightning staff seem to go away. See, you had to become one with nature, Arthrex. <laughs> not helping, not helping, not he, helping. He waits until the sap has stopped running and hands it back to you. The stick is completely uncharred now. It doesn't even look like it's been hit by lightning. Um, okay. And he proceeds to... You still have the uh, the ritual going, right, I assume? Uh, yeah. Okay. He starts chanting to you in that elemental again. The rest of you hear again that deep, melodious, eternal uh, speech come out of his mouth. And it just, it sounds like a mountain. Like, it's there. It always has been. These words have existed from beyond time. You can't move them. You can only barely perceive their meaning from where you are. You're so infinitesimally small compared to it. And Arthrix, he's he's basically chanting to you two two words. The first one is rejuvenation in that text, in that language. And the second one is um Oh crap, I had it shit. Um okay. interesting phrase. Okay, oh, I, right? I had it shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's um And rejuvenation. I, I think this is a puzzle for the ages. <laughs> you all i love you all but i hate you all um redemption that's it rejuvenation and redemption and he hands it back to you thank you you'll figure it out any more hints he kind of tilts his head at you essentially uh to him, he just gave you everything. Of course. <laughs> well, obviously the staff is rejuvenating, so... What's next, nerd? Uh... I will have to study it Use more. it in an upright way so that it can be redeemed. redeemed. But is, is it the staff? Well, you don't... You guys don't know... Anyways. I know. I'm saying this out of character. That's why I'm not using my grumbly voice. I couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> this is my grumbly voice. Batman sounds like Batman. What? <laughs> no, here's the gravel. And here's no gravel. Here's the gravel. Here's no gravel. Gravel, the difference. no gravel. God, it's not like, it's like you're not even listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> why do I even try? Oh, wait, hold on. Hi, apparently I have people in chat asking things. Uh... What up? No. There's there's a little bit of a difference, but you do kind of recognize it. And we can get more into that in a minute. Um, so, okay. as you guys focus on the staff, Drac comes over. He's a bit more composed, but he's still very visibly angry. Um, and he kind of looks down at you and goes, can you use this? Uh, I believe I can, yes. Good. You'll need it. Turns on his heel and starts walking away. You have a visit with whatever he said. Whatever gets us closer to solving this issue. Pout starts... harder, your lordship. I mean, he, he doesn't really have the best social skills, and he did just get pretty much dissed. Uh, boo -hoo! That's, that's when you guys kind of look around and notice that the Oaken Hand's not there anymore. Damn it, I was going to thank him. And you say I seem like Batman. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wow, really Are there any small pebbles of a similar make 
to this large boulder here, or is it like not eroding at all with time or anything? Oh no, it's it absolutely has. And yes, Alex, we can we can take a break in a few minutes. Um, okay. The 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 like I said last time, the the uh, oh, what's it called the the altar has has crumbled with time and age um most of the chant wasn't even still left on um on it and there's there's basically crumbly bits at the bottom but this stone does not match the surrounding area this was brought here from somewhere else a long time ago can i take three rocks from it three small pebbles sure i want to put one in my jar and i'm going to pocket the other two John, can you roll me a religion check real quick? I don't know if that's one of your things. Um, it is not one of my things. Roll it anyway. Yes, yes, a paladin without religion. Make that joke. <laughs> Every paladin ever. I've got plus Sense. five in religion. Oh, I rolled that at advantage, so just... That's fine. The first one was a 13, so... I'm okay with that. Um, We'll do 13. So, John, before she starts putting those anywhere, you snatch them out of her hands. They're still desecrated. Ooh. I'm gonna wipe her on the nose. Bad Bia. What the? Not f- take an evil thing. It's not. How is it evil? This place was desecrated. These stones still desecrated. You want to carry a curse around with you? That's how you do it. Uh, I put the rocks back down. Well, can you find me three rocks from this area that are evil? He'd have to. He'd have to consecrate the area, or at least the stones. Anything you find in this area is probably going to be tainted. I'll be back for those rocks when it's not. John, you should be able to consecrate those if you pray hard enough. I was going to yeah, say, I'm consecration is a little beyond my ability at this stage. Oh, yes. To, to re-consecrate the whole area? Absolutely. But I think you might be able to ask a certain someone for a little extra help on this part. If you want to. Mm, Raza. Raza. <laughs> Raza, Raza. Shadal. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. We we had a talk about this last session, John. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I don't want to go for a walk in the woods by myself. <laughs> I don't want to. There's a um. You. Do you mind if I take character for a moment? Yeah, fine. Because Shadal is moving through you. You feel your hand move and place the stones back in Bia's hand and you have this feeling that if she travels with them whatever it is that's affecting it will wear off take them out put them in your jar take them out every sunrise pray to whatever god you have and they should be good in a few days I stick them in my blessed jar. Pray, take them out of the jar at sunrise. Bia nods furiously. Otherwise, you have you've got a you're putting a curse on all of us. Hey, hey, DM, is the jar still glowing from last session? Yes, yes, it is. I'm wondering if that water will have any effect on them, as an aside. So, I guess here's the logic question then. Do you want to stick desecrated rocks inside of your holy jar of shininess? Matter? Not yet. This is why they're going in my pocket until they're not desecrated. Good idea. Matter? <laughs> Antimatter. I had matter, some bad ideas, and I don't want to do it. I though. want my jar still. <laughs> it's shiny and full of junk. Oh, it's it's essentially the same thing as a sunrod at this point. It's like a torch in a jar. That's new. I haven't seen it in darkness. I've only seen it in sunlight. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. 
Um, the only thing is, is that it's always a torch. There's no way to yeah. snuff it. Uh, okay. And she gets a leather carrying case for her jar. <laughs> so with that, I mean, Drac is very assertedly going on without you guys uh, at this point. He is completely unconcerned with where he's going. Boy! Can't go wandering off out here. You'll get jumped by crazy druids. I'm gonna well, follow him. Best catch up. Mm. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, I'm loving this so much. Author is just still completely distracted by his staff and making furious so, notes. You guys have a little bit of time. Uh, does anybody want to ask? Athalia, what the hell just happened? Um, before anybody does that, I'm gonna reach down and stealthily grab a leaf and try to, uh, put it in, uh, Authorix's crest. Yes! <laughs> let me, let me find myself. Can you roll me please? <laughs> do I roll a perception for that? Yes, you do. Thank you. Oh my god! <laughs> Why? Yeah. Why? No, you have no fucking idea. You're very involved with that staff and writing down everything so you don't forget it. Uh, that you don't notice that that little that little feeling of fur tingle on the back of your neck. Please as a tell me it's leaf. between the horns, just sticking straight up. I'm just gonna look at Bia and just shake my head. Don't do it. <laughs> Hashtag be a no. Be a yes. <laughs> be a why not? Yeah, always <laughs> yes. All right, so before we move any further, um, I'm going to call time. Lexi, you said you needed some stuff that you needed to do real quick? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. We'll take a, uh, we'll call a 10 minute break. Come back at 10.33. Okay. Yes. Sound good? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I, will use I know that, that was pretty cinematic. Are you guys? Was that okay? Everybody, yes. it? more. Give me mine. Give me. Give me. <laughs> Grabby hands. I want. It's so I shall nice return. Go ahead. It's nice to be out with everybody again. This is a lot of fun. Ow. Ow, 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 ow. Oh. Oh, perfect. Okay. Add a handout. I should probably actually put this in a fill so you guys can look at it again. So how much more shenanigans? How many more shenanigans can Varus get Bia into? Because this, I'm loving this. <laughs> I I swear to God, you're gonna tell her the truth at some point, and she's just not gonna believe you. <laughs> like, no, what did you think Bia, I was no, going you... for? <laughs> no, like on my deathbed, are... it's gonna be all those myths I told you. I made them up. I feel like you're gonna walk into a cave and be like, "Yeah, there's stalactites. There's there's animals that look like stalactites that'll drop on you and try and eat your head." Whatever. No, really, Bia, you need to stop. <laughs> they're called drop bears. Dark mantles. Mm -hmm. That's what they're called. Yeah. All of a sudden, the author <laughs> Every... just rushes to his publisher. We need to take them off the shelf now. Now. <laughs> <laughs> the. Uh... The, the the drop bear of the cave is known as the Droptopus, the AKA the Dark Mantle. It's an octopus that hangs on top of the cave and drops on people. Essentially. Or 
or its other friend that is a stalagmite, the good old Roper. Mm-hmm. Ropers hey, are Roper? fun. I can't wait to use those. Rovers are fun and extremely dangerous. What's a good name for, like, a different name for, like, a prophet besides Herald? Uh, Seeker? Speaker. Uh, d d I like uh, that. Emissary? Disciple. Ooh, even better. Emissary. Representative? Soothsayer. I got emissary. Thank you. Diviner, <laughs> oracle, I auger, symbol. Shall I grab how many the sorai shall I pull out? I collect them. <laughs> I was gonna say, don't ask Maddie. She has a thousand. Yo. <laughs> don't knock my hobbies. I don't knock yours. What hobbies? Avoiding hobbies. That's your hobby. <laughs> Apathy. Apathy is my hobby. Denying me my yarn hoarding friends. No, we're just not allowed to enable addiction. It's bad. Don't understand. One day, I already told her she's gonna. That's gonna be her death. Is she's gonna find her dead under a pile of yarn? gonna collapse on her she's gonna be like one of those hoarders that die in their houses for That's the their, best way all to their go. garbage all their Under garbage collapses on them and they just die or fabric so it's gonna happen i see no so problem with this a yarn avalanche and she's just gonna get buried <laughs> like we we're looking for the cables to this uh this TV that she cannot find the cables. So I just started opening drawers and stuff, and it's like every drawer is just yarn. Every drawer is yarn. There's yarn everywhere. So much yarn. I mean, that's like me in fabric and embroidery thread and the sorai. I've been to your house. It's not as bad. Yeah, because I have to hide everything before I'm allowed to have <laughs> guests over. <laughs> okay, so you guys should see a new handout um, for the Oaken Hand. Um, if you mm -hmm. read, there's a couple. I just put a couple sentences together, so it's not a huge thing. But um, if you guys ever want to bring that up to look at it, it's there Mine. now. Um, Sharpie's front walls is also there, right? Yes. Drax is there. I should probably take fixations up. Gabriel's up. Drax up. Yep. All them. Let's see all oh, yeah. Um, I'm also going to give you Viscountess because for some strange reason it's not there. Here's just so simple. Like, that's just like, ah, oh, it's so simple right now. Wait What's until that? you're, wait until you're like, 30 sessions in and you'll have so many handouts that you won't know what to do with them. <laughs> Mine is literally I have a folder called NPCs that then has a folder for every city that then has a folder for every like building or major location in that city that then has each NPC that resides there in there. Because the only way that I can organize it in any sort of way where I can find them. <laughs> My Google Drive is like that for my game. Folders upon subfolders upon subfolders. It's the, literally the only... Like, I, I would not be able to find the ones I'm looking for if I didn't do that. But right now, all the ones I'm using are in, like, the very top folder, which is real nice because it's... My top folder is literally other adventures, and they're with another set of adventures, so it's real easy. It's nice immediately find their handouts or their character sheets wow 
when my real 20 loads so slow when I load my game because there's so many assets and stuff <laughs> in it. Yeah. It's Be right bad. back. I have to grab a pair of pliers. My sewing is getting difficult. <laughs> and so it begins. Because I have pro, so like I just have unlimited, so there's just, I have so many resources. So many. Pliers acquired. You must acquire additional pliers. Must build additional pylons. Pliers have arrived. <clears throat> I'm sewing a rose. Oh, God. I'm reading through this D100 list of potion effects. Because number one, I love this fucking chart. This is an amazing chart for different things to do for potions. Uh, because a lot of them are not mechanical. It's just flavor. But the, there are a few mechanical ones put in. Apparently, one of them is a blood thinner uh, additive. Okay. So for one day, you bleed out after getting hit. Oh, Jesus. Take half the damage done on your first hit and subtract it for all following rounds until you're healed. Jesus. Yeah. That's rough. But it's only the first hit. But that still consists of damage until somebody heals you. Feels like GURPS rules right there. When you have full blade rules enabled. Mm hmm. It's so devious. I love it. Yeah, if you guys, I'll, I'll put it in the chat. It's actually, I like it. I love D100, uh, the subreddit, because they have so much good just stuff that people get their heads together and they come up with a hundred different instances of just random bullshit. It's amazing. <laughs> Why, I too like random bullshit. Uh... Here, I'll link to uh, the Reddit subreddit, too. This reminds me of the list that I had to make for a character who is a chaos sorcerer on steroids. They actually have, um, ran, they have... I think they have a chart for wild, wild magic effects. Yeah, but I had to make one as if they were, like, a 19th level caster... Oh, jeez. Morbid miscasts. Ye old. Ooh, these look good. <laughs> oh, my God, these are awesome. If you guys go to that and look up the morbid miscasts, that is, ooh, yeah, it's pretty red, it's pretty rough. It is. <laughs> Not gonna lie, sent the stream link to some of my friends. Really uh, hoping my other DM isn't listening to this because the ideas, so will, many ideas, it will end poorly for us. Uh man, something rattles around inside your finger bones. The rattling grows rapidly louder until the backs of your fingers split open from the knuckle to nail. Luminescent maws flutter nope. out of them. Nope. You nope. blink. Nope. There are no maws. Your fingers are fine, except for the faint scars in a line down from them. <laughs> no, no, I'm good. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. No. I'm making a know that for the Call of Cthulhu game. Yeah, dude, honestly, look it up. Uh, here, I'll post that one, too. You could get some really good ideas out of that. Uh -huh. right, morbid mistakes. Oh, uh, no. The boundary between yourself and your clothing burlers. Removing it will require a knife, time, and high pain tolerance. Mm. Ow. Oh, I'm all for this. Right? 
Why did you do this to us? Mysterious masks. Right. I, I did it because this is so much fun. Ooh, these are really cool. All right. Uh, it's 35. Everybody back? I'm there. I think we're missing a John. No, I'm here. Okay. Lexi? All right. So we... Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yep. And Maddie's here because she was talking. Okay. Ooh, interesting desert location. No, I'm not here. I'm I'm missing. You don't see me. I'm about to go from the wind. She's John Cena. All right. <sighs> okay, so um Please and all of and that being done. And you guys start walking back to the village. Um a very angry still track uh kind of leading the way it seems like he kind of knows where to go um if anybody wants to take the leadership from him i don't think he'll say anything it seems like he's blowing off steam um but yeah the oaken hand gave a very interesting proposition in order to complete the challenge to meet kalim and unfortunately drac did not go out of this well uh basically being told that he wasn't enough. That what he has accomplished was not enough. He basically said you have to stop being a nerd if you want to be a fo true follower of Kalim. <laughs> well, then I am entirely against this. You all realize that you have no idea where Athalia is from. Or what her home is. Or what yeah. family you're supposed to be fixing. I'm about to say, that's I kind of par for the course for it. any of us. So, Athalia, that uh, lady we met the other day when you were pulling me out of the, the brink and the uh, nice-looking one, uh, care to elaborate? Because I get the feeling things. People. Uh -huh. What about What it? are we doing? You are the expert here. I'm no expert. I mean, apparently it's your family, so... Doesn't mean I'm an expert. More of Compared an expert to us. Of us. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing. About my whole family situation, so I'm not going to tell you guys anything. Well, he said we needed to do something like that. Put them back together, mended family, kind of the fate of the world. The Kalim. I mean, my family kind of has a shaky history, so uh, putting it back together is likely to be a century-long project. We don't have a century. Well, I don't have a century. I don't know how the rest of how long the rest of you will live. Uh, I have a couple at least, but I don't. I don't think my. Yes, I. I don't have that long. So you don't at least want to see. Maybe, if you guys shared some of your own histories, it might convince her to be a bit more open about her own. Maybe. <laughs> oh god, you're serious. <laughs> Fia's gonna walk up to Athalia and clap a hand on her shoulder. I kinda get it on the whole complicated family thing, I, I guess. I mean... I think you all do, actually. But do we know that? No. So here's an idea. There's an inn right around where the station is hiding. Why don't you guys share that? Maybe. It's up to you. I'm not saying anything as a dungeon master. Nah. No. 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 I what? think we all need a good long drink so we get drunk enough that we can discuss things. Because uh -huh. it's best to know the people we sail with. 
We're not sailing, beer. We're traveling on land. It's a metaphor. Do pirates, Mesomophor do pirates know those? You're about to get punched. <laughs> I was just thinking that. I was complicating whether or not it was a good way to start the bonding process to drop kick him or punch him. It's a bit punching. of a debate right now. Punching. Punching always works. I punched Dothrix in the face. Yes, good. <laughs> I was going to go with shoulder. <laughs> yeah. It's more fun if I boop the snoot. Come on, roll that's for not, it. That's not booping the suit. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna say I'm hitting him as hard as I can. It's like a, like a love tap. That's an attack. As Come far on. as barbarians, who are... hit him in the face. <laughs> let's, let's roll for this. Come on. Oh Jesus. Oh shit! Can I, should I? Unarmed can attack. I? Yeah. Yep. No. Strength no modifier unless you have tavern brother. A college boy. It's supposed oh, to be oh, playful. Jesus. Holy shit. Oh, it was supposed to be playful. <laughs> nope. Josh, no, we're doing this. Uh, my AC's AC is 16. Damn. So can that be a lot so, lower? So I believe it's a uh, one damage. Four. No, no one it's damage. one damage unless you have a uh, tavern brawler. So I deftly booped the snoot a little harder than intended. It's been a stressful day. <laughs> I'll mark off that. I imagine you kind of like do the anime thump on the head more Probably. than anything. <laughs> Crack. Ow! How's that for metaphor? It's still not a metaphor. It only <laughs> hurts. It's like you're confusing metaphors for similes and pain. <laughs> Pain is a metaphor for how you should feel when you <laughs> express yourself to your comrades. No, it is a it is a result of an action. I think he needs more experience in metaphors. <laughs> I I veer I very up. no no I'm very far away. I am I I now I now go to the upper opposite side of the group than these two. <laughs> oh, unarmed strike deals bludgeoning damage equal to one plus your strength mod. Your strength yes. Four mod. damage. So, Arthur, take four damage. Ouch. Okay. Ouch. And and probably better not to correct her next time. <laughs> but how? No, let's see what better I see. I I have fairly pretty good AC. I just didn't expect her to roll that well. Damn. Okay, so I take it you guys head back to Stromness at this point? Eventually. Yeah. Okay. It's an awkward carriage ride. Yeah, awkwardly quiet, probably, while everybody contemplates exactly what they're going to be telling each other at this point. <laughs> it's cute how you think we're going to be telling each other stuff. Right. <laughs> Is this going to be Bia drunkenly wailing about her problems because no one else will open up? <laughs> the Bia show! <laughs> Da, 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 da. All right, so you guys head back. I assume you're going to part ways with Drac and Vexation and go to the Black Cello again? Yep. Uh, does, I'm sorry, does, what's his face? Does Gabriel show up to collect his lord? Uh, no, he does not. Damn it. Okay. Well, how would he know that he's there? Uh, well, he's Gabriel. I just expect him to know everything about what's right. magic. <laughs> He scries on the Lord Drax every moment that the Lord Drax is not within direct eyesight. <laughs> well, Drac, um, when you guys pull up and you get out, um, Drac has settled into a very, um, very angry quiet. Uh, he's not snapping at anybody. He's just very um, internal at the moment, I guess. He seems like he's trying to work something out with himself. Um but it's almost like nothing else exists at the moment. I mean, if any of you try to talk to him, he'd shrug it off. It, it, it would almost as be he didn't hear you at all. Um, until finally you guys pull up to uh, outside the gates. Well, far outside the gates. 
and vexation motions everybody out. He is confused. He kind of is giving that look to everybody like, I know something happened and nobody's talking about it. Ah, good old coping mechanisms. He uh, pulls the, the chariot back into his amulet, strings it back up, and you guys start your walk. Perception check. I assume. Go for it. <laughs> You're going to figure it out eventually. <laughs> Is this still a disadvantage? Yes, it would be. Damn it. <laughs> I love how you're consistently rolling bad on this. <laughs> wow, yeah. Even if it wasn't a disadvantage, it wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess you get momentarily distracted as somebody brushes next to you, and you miss it again. You just see him putting on the amulet. <laughs> just see that fucking Kermit the Frog yes. pull his, his face and <laughs> Why are you wanna? Um Okay, so I take it everybody's gonna be fairly quiet on the walk back. Oh yes. There's a lot of discussion happening. Uh okay. yes, I'm still kind of somewhat focused on my staff a little bit. Okay. Uh Drac kind of bids you farewell in almost an absent way like it's a trivial thing at this point like all right see you later whatever kind of thing um as he's more focused on whatever's going on in his head than pleasantries um and bids his way off and i vexation still has a very confused look on his face as he kind of returns to his shed um but obviously he doesn't ask what's going on. Inadequacy issues. Don't worry about it. He okay. He, he gives that half lidded nod of got it before he uh, claps you specifically on the back and walks back to his shed. Happens to men every once in a while. <laughs> so everybody returns to the black cello. Uh, and waits a further instruction. I order everybody a round of drinks. Go ahead and slap a gold on the table for it. I do. Fantastic. Everybody's got their beverage of choice. Actually, we never really determined what everybody drinks. Port. Othrix. Port. Port. Maddie. Let's be a drink. Probably rum out of habit. Athalia, what does she normally drink? I'm honestly not sure. Probably wine. Okay. Classier wines, I imagine, too. Not that bottom rate stuff. Yeah, when she can afford it. <laughs> uh, Varys? Whatever's cheap. Okay. And Hallis? Also rum. Also rum. Okay. So slap down on the table. All are quiet. Staring yep. at each other, nursing your drinks. All staring at Athalia. <laughs> Awkwardly. Do we want to have this conversation here, or will you all start talking if we're in a private room? I don't because think I don't... the location makes a difference. I don't, I, I don't have enough gold to get you all very drunk. Just slightly drunk. I don't know what we're really supposed to be discussing here. I mean, I thought I, I, I thought we have instructions now about what we're supposed to do next. And, uh, and uh, Althali... What do you think those instructions are, Arthrix? Something to do with Althalia, I believe. Uh, she's the one who knows what our next step is. Oh, hell no, I don't. Not unless you want to spend a good few decades putting my family back together. I think it'll those take are... us decades. We're problem solvers. You've met us. You've met the rest of them. You've met some of them. Oh. Do you want to talk about your family, Athalia, and why they're broken in the first place? 
why will it take centuries to put them back together again? Um, mostly because they're scattered, from what I know. And, uh, my cousin's a major dick. Who I elaborate. might have to kill. Elaborate? Well, uh, we had decided, Lex, if I recall what? correctly, last night, that your your family, as far as you know it, was killed. I thought there were, like, some cousins and stuff still alive. Oh, yeah, and the other noble houses. Oh, I thought they were part of my house. My bad. Scratch out those notes. Uh, does anybody want to roll an insight check? I'll fail at one. I'll do it and say, watch me fail. fail. Huh. Yo. Same exact <laughs> roll. Beautiful. Man. We are terrible at interpersonal skills. I, I mean, apparently I'm doing well tonight. Get me drunk is the cure to everything. I only roll well, roll well on booze. Ain't it the yeah, way. was the first one. Uh, he rolled two 11s. <laughs> and Thalia, go ahead and roll an insight check for me. Yeah, give me a second. Sure. It's just... Is that a 0.005% chance to roll doubles? Okay. So, Hallis, you're under the assumption that with what the Oakenhand said and the revelation that her family might be dead, you think necromancy might be involved here. Because <laughs> that's a challenge, right? To bring people back. Oh, yeah. I mean, Especially if they're not. zombies. That makes everything more difficult. <laughs> Othrix, you think that this might be the track that you go on. It's it's fairly convinced. Hallis makes a convincing argument. Hmm. Um, you see, I hear if they're zombies first, you can't just revive them anymore. It's got to be special. Well, yes, but those are usually higher level necromancies. You don't get that with any old around the mill. It could be centuries old. We could be dealing with a lich. Exactly. Oh, yeah. It's going to make everything more difficult. You have a feeling that he means not just your direct family. He means the courts. That long standing vote finally coming to an end. Okay. Because technically your people have been divided for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Ferris, Bia. You both sense that there's more to this story than you know. Um, in a way that essentially that key piece is missing. You you have a feeling that it has it's a larger meaning besides just like immediate family, and that this really is a bigger task than the oak in hand made it sound like. Uh, I get the feeling there's more to this. Why don't you start at the beginning and we'll determine how many centuries it'll take. Hmm? Let us decide if it takes one century or one week. No judgment. So what do you think, Athalia? Hmm, I don't know. We... I think all of us have some pasts that are complex. Uh, I'll make you a bet. I'll order the next round of drinks if your past ends up being more complex than mine. Are we at an accord? Yar. Mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> sounds like sounds like plan then. I'm going to open you like a drink. Say? <laughs> my past is not more complicated it's just longer okay well who wants to go first not me <laughs> Pia why don't you grace us with 
oh, man. character's story of why she's so messed up. Bia's going to take a long draft of her drink and set her jar on the table because it is my saltwater binky. Your binky. The glowy binky. Look, I like tall tales as the rest of you, so we're going to keep this short because it's neither tall nor interesting. Uh... I was not always a pirate. Sorry. Excavator uh, rec recovery specialist. Uh, Arthrix doesn't say anything. He just drinks his glass. I was born to a group of Goliath who wander the mountains. But I got really unlucky or lucky depending on who asks. And I was born with the prophecy. All of my people are born at the base of a mountain we call Sophris's drum, and it's believed that if you're born to the ringing of the drum, aka lightning hitting it, making a big boom, very cool, interesting to see. It means that you're the uh, you, you're you're unlucky. That's what it means. We'll not get in the titles or hoopla. Um, it means your life is said to be full of great change. For me, it meant my life was full of great decisions being made on my behalf. Lots of the best food, the best clothes. Uh, my tribe of people believe in earning everything, and I was the only one that did not get to earn anything. Because according to them, I'd earned it with my very birth. First time I get to actually do anything on my own, we're experiencing troubles, not enough food, bad you know, hunting, weather stuff. I uh, get to do a little ceremony, real easy. You know, not, nothing too bad. Just uh, take a little boat ride up a river. Uh, I fall into the brink right before the end, and I'm pulled up. And as is custom, when you do someone a favor, you offer a favor in kind. That favor, unfortunately, was ten years of servitude to the captain of the ship. Uh, yeah. Mm. That did, didn't make the whole ten years. Um he uh, turned bad, sour, hurting people, hurting crew. So I removed the problem. Only I made myself a new problem. There was no captain for the ship. So, you know, couldn't end my service and couldn't hand over the ship to people who needed it, needed one. And uh, I guess I just never really found one, uh, except for old trading partner or friend i guess you could say uh not anymore obviously turned bad chased my ship tried to sink it we almost escaped him but right before i could get into port and safety and guards and all the other what nice things about civilization we were run aground and i lost most of my crew they're uh waiting for me to get enough money to get a new ship up new home and new livelihood so that's why I'm here. Not much more, not much more interesting things about me. Uh, yeah. And she drinks another long draft. Okay, who's next? Please, for the love of God, someone else, don't speak up all at once. <laughs> Any comments? Questions? Yeah, I mean, you had a teammate just literally spill everything to you guys. So you mutinied a crew, and then you got stuck as captain because no one else was fit. I didn't think the plan over very well. So has anything of this prophecy manifested yet? Has there been any... Uh... Yes, Have you seen unfortunately. Her luck? <laughs> Have you seen oh, that's her not luck? What, that's not what the name's for. <laughs> <laughs> that's a story for another drink uh, yeah the um, Sophris showed herself to me recently uh, along with her sister Emra, Emra and uh, they want me to choose between the two of them to make me champion hence the sparky boom lightning thingy with the hit hit I am not thrilled 
so I might, depending on which one I choose, I'm either not going to be able to get the winds behind my sails or the water under my boat. Lucky me. Storms can follow you outside of the ocean. That one's slightly worse, in my opinion. <laughs> so what about Halas? Does Halas feel like sharing? I don't know if Halas feels like he has much as much of a thing to say. Ah, this isn't doesn't... as grand, in his opinion. Oh yeah, it's not going to be as grand, but it might help. But Make he does have a question for another member. Mm -hmm. So, Arthrix. <laughs> well, I fucking knew it. Uh, well, mm, uh, very good Since we're speaking about pasts, mm -hmm. one of those one guys that we talk, ran into that I know want with you seemed to be something from your past. I'm the foggiest. I mean, well, I don't uh, believe you're telling the truth. Well, obviously they Operic. they found out sharing is caring. They found out about the coin, obviously, from the letter I sent to one of my one of my professors, and uh, they now want it. That is obvious enough. Sounded like they were from some group you know of. A group that is better left not known. Sip. Are you going to put, put your teammates in danger like that, Arthrix? They <laughs> seem to know you real well, so maybe we should know them lest we make acquaintances with the wrong people at the wrong time and the wrong weapons. Kind of like you did on the bridge. Hallis knows about them. I know about Hayden, and he's just a ruffian, but anyone he's working for probably is worse. I think Hallis would remember the specific phrase, the lost house. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Othric stands there looking in the middle distance for a moment. Then he just chugs back the port. <clears throat> Shouldn't waste good port like that. It should be enjoyed. Over a long period. Maybe you should do less drinking and more talking then. All right. I usually you're so talkative. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a talkative about important things. So, all of you are sure I'm aware of are aware of there are various major houses of dragonborn clans. Uh, especially outside of Strom, not Stromness. I'm sorry. Um, Silvershore. Silvershore. Sorry, I was drawing a blank. Uh, Are you good? Is Silvershore. However, there is another major house referred to as the Lost House. Shall you say a dishonored, un, uh, a dishonored, disrobed, and exiled house that now lives in the uh, shall we say of underbellies of most major cities they are specifically uh, adept at finding information and things well I I needed to find things specifically old things things that nobody knew where they were anymore and things to do with that dragon scale thing you carry around precisely Rock. I was trying to find any information any artifacts any uh, ruins I could dating as far back into the history of this island as possible um, so I, uh, I I decided to request their help now obviously they it is not <clears throat> how shall I put this yes they are dishonored shunned and any family caught trysting with them uh, would immediately be dishonored themselves and it would be societal, ta societal taboo and s suicide for any major house to associate with them Unfortunately, 
It is one of the worst kept secrets that every major house associates with them. It is not hard to buy and sell with these people. It was not hard to find them. And with my own knowledge and my own abilities, they found in me a good partner, as they called it. Uh, they would give me information as to various locations of digs, artifacts, ruins, and I would provide for them items, whether it be of archaeological nature, magical nature, or just information they needed. And now they want those coins that we found. Yes, and now they want the coins. Coin. Coin, Singular. sorry, yes. Good better fellows. Good uh that's a that's a big one. He is of a noble house. Well, well I've not said that yet. Mm, okay. Yep, yeah, you're right. You didn't I've not said that yet. <laughs> but you did admit association with a essentially a known criminal element. Oh yes. So has Bia uh, ever worked with them before? You've yeah, you've worked with the Lost House before. Okay. You probably know most of who he knows in uh in Elysia. Because you hmm. would manage to get shipments there or out of there. It'd be ironic, I've probably carried some of his shit elsewhere. Probably. <laughs> and you never knew it. What's uh what's our resident paladin gotta say about the criminal element here? You're all terrible and should feel terrible. <laughs> oh, they're not that bad. They pay well. And, enough. And they are true Not that I would know. To, and they are true to their word, and right now that is the sticky part. Come on, Drow. Obviously you've had dealings with unsavory elements mm. usually hurting them I mean technically <sighs> one man's moral is another man's crime so no no some things are universally crime these yeah usually murder and theft these you'd are... be surprised these artifacts especially murder on a large scale Mr. Drow, right? Mhm. Mm These artifacts would have been lost or never discovered. I made sure to bring them to the light of day where they could be properly studied. Ain't you a lovely saint for doing that? I not. It belongs in a museum. <laughs> <laughs> or to it's the highest bidder, which is one of my flaws. Mm-hmm. Well, we're around most of the table. I believe we know Varys' story pretty well from what we've heard. What have you heard? I have not heard Jack Diddley. He said that he's worked down in the bottom of Alicia digging people out. Yeah, but I bet there's more to that story. Hey, Mr. Morrill, care to share? Nope. Ah, how would Shadar feel about you not going on an emotional journey with us? I, that's one road I'm not getting lost down. <laughs> Fair enough. I see what you did there. <laughs> I would love to hear about Hallis's, uh little encounter with the uh, Mastwood. Okay, then how about we get, if we're skipping the Paladin... Hey, Mr. Tall, Dark, and Silent. I'm really silent. Eh, but you brood. Loudly. <laughs> I mean, mine's, Brooding loudly. Mine's nothing so impeccable. Just... What is that town called? Damas 
Mashwood or something? No, that's the forest. What is the city uh, right there called? Let me get into it. Hold on. I cannot remember Shut its name right now. Back to the world map. Cape Herald. So that's yep, what it Cape was. Herald. Outside the masthead forest. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing so magnificent. Grew up in Cape Herald. Both of my parents died when I was younger. Details are less important. And then I started mercenarying out when I got old enough to fight. Not much of a story there. Uh, Do I believe tell... that? You're not going to uh, tell him about the, the sweet little thing you still have in Tripoint? About to say, uh, no. <laughs> would, <laughs> Do I believe tell him? him about that? <laughs> would... Do I believe him? John would, not John, I'm sorry. Uh, Garrett, would I, would, would I know that since we have a history together? Or would you not even reveal that to me? I don't think he'd talk, like... The thing he's not talking about is something that, like, he would not talk about. Okay. It's worthwhile. Because that might come up later, cough, cough. Uh, same thing with John's past, cough, cough. <laughs> all kinds of lovely things I have the ability to play with that you all are not warning each other about. It's amazing. <laughs> Hey, I've warned. I'm feeling about... so betrayed here. I laid everything out on the table, and I mm -hmm. I have warned about what the important things are. All right, the the oh, dangerous yeah. things it, right now. The fact that you're a noble of the class and that is ignoring it. It's that is out of character. Out of character. That is out of character. That is meta knowledge. Yes, that is not that's all knowledge. Of, yep, it's all meta knowledge. Thank you. I mean, Alice's only thing that's dangerous that he would think of was dangerous is something he thinks everyone should know is dangerous, which is the masthead forest. Yep. Varus isn't bringing up what he did before digging people out of stones. You're not getting that out of him. That's trauma right there. That's some deep trauma. Mm. Is it deeper trauma than Halas's thing that he's not talking about, though? Bea just figures this is all rumor and hearsay anyway for hers at this point. You don't get infamous without rumors about where you came from. That's true. So... Our lovely bard. Do you feel like they've shared enough to, to get a little bit more out of you so they can try and help? Yeah, okay. Everyone stares at Athalia. Trying to oh, find out good. if you get a drink or not. Oh, no, I'm going to owe you a drink. Like I said, my past isn't more complicated than yours, it's just longer. Well, let's see. Well, you're an elf, of course it's longer. Exactly. Um, everything was fine for a while with my family. Uh, the courts were warring, always. Not really war, more like political maneuvering, but whatever. Cold war. Same thing. Um, and one of them decided that our court's vote needed to change hands because there's an issue we've been debating for centuries. And they decided that uh, my family needed to be replaced. So I made it out alive. Um, I don't think anybody else did. And now I have to apparently go back and rebuild my court. You have a court? Um, it's like a family house type of thing. There's a few of us and we vote on important matters. So what you're telling us is you're a princess. Uh, hell no. I'm ordering another round of drinks now. <laughs> <laughs> No, she Look who's is, more complicated. She is of nobility of major households that holds power. Traveling with a community. princess. 
I'm not a fucking princess. Oh, if the people under if the people back home heard about this. I'm not a princess. Technically, I'm just the heir to the court An heiress. Scene. Even so, you're even a better. queen. She has no. an official title, too, as being the head of her court. What is the official title? We, I don't the, think we ever discussed that. The official title is um, Khaleesi. Oh, I had it, Khaleesi. Uh, you are the. Um, Oh shit! Where is it? I had it written down. Um, That's a weird title. Yeah, you, you are grand sovereign. You are the watcher of fate, as the head of your house or the head of your court. Yeah, I could see that. Although that's obviously out of character knowledge. If you don't tell them, they don't know that. Yeah, no, I'm not going to tell them that. But <laughs> so we're so I'm looking over at Bea. So we're settling on princess then. I'm yep. thinking Queen. She's the one that's in charge of the whole family. No, there her, is. So. She hasn't there been coronated yet. She's still the princess. No, 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 no. no I was a whole separate royal family, guys. Come on. Is Duck there? shit. Can we on that? Shh. I'm lying out my <laughs> ass, okay? Uh huh. And you're insight? technically the heir to thing. Yes, insight. Insight for days. Uh, Everyone's inciting. <laughs> All right, what do I roll? You would roll, I deception. believe, deception. Yep. Which I believe you have a double specialty in. God. Okay. Probably expertise. Uh, would I roll at advantage or disadvantage? Or normal? Just regular. You should um, have. I would say advantage, because none of these people have any idea of the elven structure. I still win. I don't... Yep. Varys is familiar with much more labyrinthine structures of politics. Um, so Hallis, Arthrix and Bia, you both buy it. There is a, an elven royal family, and she is, she has not been ordained, it's separate, she is just one of the courts. Hallis, oh my god, this is great! You're cautious. You think she's lying, but you can't put a finger as to why she would lie about it. So it Because I don't want to be labeled as a fucking princess, okay? <laughs> Varys, you are almost 100% sure she's, she's lying through your ass. You know, comments, I just but, you would just think that you don't want to be labeled as a princess, but that you are actually a princess. See, there's one thing I've learned in dealing with you nobly types, and that's when you're lying through your teeth. Arthrix just so, coughs a little. I'm bit. just gonna look at Varys and just, uh, is, yeah, uh, sure. Is nobody gonna ask how he knows nobles? <sighs> Now, apparently, you've got more to your story, too, pretty boy. How do you know you. anything about mo nobles, or did you dig a lot of them up? How do you think things got bad underground? People Fair. like her dropping towers on poor people in their little wars. I don't drop towers. If people anybody like would, you. If anybody would like to roll history on that claim. God, my history is bad, but... I've been there, so. <laughs> <Might as> well. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, whenever I hear you laugh, Josh, I just hear Roshi laugh. Um, Hallis and Bia, you guys are lost. That that particular legend is lost to you. Or, or I should say event. Athalia, you were alive when you heard the tale of this reach you. Um, well, I mean, I'm, I should be alive when I heard the tale. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, you were in. You were still in Silvershore at this point. You have not yet traveled to Elysia. Um, Othrix, you remember reading about a particular event in Elysian culture uh, that was actually a very important event in tensions between the Over City and the Undercity, and that there was a. a jo actually, John, do you want to tell this one? I think you remember it better than I do at this point. Um, you might have to step in at points. Okay. That's but right. now, back in the day, the uh, the noble houses, the the noble families each owned one of those great towers reaching up to the sky, and there was a different tower for every race. They all got along in harmony. Quotes around that, and uh, well, as nobles do, spats were had, and one day, uh, one of the houses approached a wizard to 
drop a tower a little bit. It was just meant to shorten. But instead, it drops the whole tower into the Undercity. Yes, I remember this. Okay. So this was as humans were starting to push uh, the rest of the races down into the Undercity through very obscure rules that only they could come up with. Um, it was mainly, you know, you know all, there were still peop- races above ground, but it was, it was starting to get pretty rough. And at one point, one of the watchtowers was owned by one of the nobility. I mean, he got a nice, bright, shiny honor guard that he liked to parade around everywhere. And one of the other nobles got jealous and decided to literally take him down a peg and hired a wizard to do it. Problem is is that the wizard didn't calculate it correctly and actually ended up sinking the whole watchtower into the Undercity. I think this was taught in class as shoddy workmanship to all magic users. Not only shoddy workmanship, but it killed a lot of people in the other It caused a lot of cave-ins. And what was notable about it was that the nobility didn't care. There was no aid or anything offered to those in the Undercity who got affected by it. But attacking people's property directly was outlawed after that from nobility. So, Othrix, Athalia, you both would know that. So the fact that Mr. Uh, Mr. Paladin here was around for that might give a bit of inkling as to why he doesn't like nobility too much. Since he was probably the one that had to dig a lot of them out. Ah. Yes, that would... That would come. How old are you, Athalia? A couple hundred. Mm, like 250. I think we agreed on Varus is pushing four. I don't yep. remember. It should be on I'm your sheet. Saying to Sarge. It's not oh. on my sheet. That's why I'm double checking with Sarge. I we think, were saying yeah, he's pushing about 400. 400. Yeah. Yep. Varus is just going to down another couple of drinks. When you get to be 400, you remember a lot that the books forget. Okay, old man. And no. I'm not talking about it, Othrix. Uh, I was not asking. But all right. Anyway, so so what is this vote that they didn't have, that they didn't want you to have part of? Your family, that is. Oh, me? Yep. Yes. So let me step in for a quick sec. Lexi. Technically, the code of the Elven City is that you only have to have the sigil for that court's vote to count. It doesn't matter who holds it. So they can vote by um, proxy. Proxy. Thank you. So they can send somebody else who's not a part of the court in case they feel like there's a betrayal or something like that that's going to happen. So the rule is extremely vague. The court themselves don't have to be present. Somebody just has to be holding the sigil. You think that somebody was trying to take the sigil to vote and ended up killing everybody. Okay. That's the running theory at the moment. Which is why you ran with the sigil. So now they're still stuck. There's five houses, there's five courts, four on each side of this issue. And yours was the middle. You mean two? Two on each side. Sorry. (laughs) Two on each side. Yours was the deciding vote. Has been for a while. Somebody wanted to steal that sigil, again, assumedly, and cast the winning vote in proxy for your court, which is why you took the sigil. Right. So you want to know what the vote is? Yes. I okay. assume it'd be something important. To be debated for centuries. We've all voted against it. The good families, that is. The good courts. Um, and there are a couple of courts that would like to 
take more land. And part of the reason I think my family was killed was to take our vote and vote for more land, which means we would invade places, which over half the population doesn't really want to do. Well, would they have to go along with it? What sort of it? places? They would have to go along with it if we voted that way, yes. So all you really need to do is make it there alive and cast the vote. Oh, they'll vote again and every they vote every 50 years on this issue. At least for 50 years they couldn't take any action. True. So when's the next vote? Well, I don't know. The next vote can't happen until uh, somebody brings the sigil. I think and... they're stuck in a deadlock currently if there's no si their fifth sigil. So, like, so what? Would you like to tell them about the population aspect of that vote? No. Is that something you want to keep to yourself? I don't see any reason to tell them. Okay. So where just to put this really... it on out of character, uh, that is obviously meta knowledge, but there is another aspect to it. As players, not as characters. Yeah, I don't... Can I repeat my question? Where would they be taking this land from? Here. The surrounding area, obviously. Where's... And... Where? Um, I'm going to pull out my map. And the whole land's called, what, Calestia, right? Calestia, yep. I'm going to pull out my map and point at Calestia and go, There. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. They would be cutting the entire continent in half. Oh no, I meant the whole thing. Oh. That's not gonna happen. No, it's not, but I'd rather not see most of my kindred killed in a pointless war we will not win. Do that care. most of us don't even want. Is it... Seems like a futile errand. Well, Nothing brings other people together than an aggressor against all. Why? What parties are there within within the elf factions believe they could even stand a chance against the other races? Hang on, out of character, Sarge. You know what? I am going to tell them about the other okay. thing. Um, By all means. Well, the reason why it's such a fucking deadlock. Um, the reason they want to take more land is so that they can take more people into our land, I guess, because our population is fairly rapidly, for elves anyway, shrinking. Population deficit. Hmm? Would you Would you mind if I step in real quick? Go for it. I'm okay. not going to explain it well. <laughs> no, you're, you're fine. I just I just wanted to make sure it was explained to you too, so that everybody's on the same page. Um, the elves, there's there's two main trains of thought. There's high courts, and then there's the constituents of those courts. Uh, right now, there's very few noble elves left. Noble elves have the magical powers. Their their bloodline makes sure that they have the ability to harness. Uh, the Feywild to um, perform their magic accordingly. There's a legitimate fear that by breeding with people who do not have that ability, they'll lose it. And therefore, they'll lose more of their uh, territory. The elves have shrunk from f uh, five cities in the Feywild to one. And they're fighting back as best as they can. So on one hand, the courts that don't want to invade Calestia want to open up the bloodline to non-nobles. On the other hand, the people who still want to be able to exist in the Feywild and have that magic that can tame it say, we need to go someplace else. We need to, to pull resources from other places so that we can survive. Okay, so 
So they want a continent of slave labor. Not exactly slave labor, but they want to be able to continue to exist and their bloodline stay magical. They but want... what is that? Like, why do they need to invade the rest of the continent for that? That's... It's easier to survive not in the Feywild. All right, so to not lose in the Feywild, they'd rather take over the material plane. Yep, keep their city in the Feywild for magicians and be able to breed out in Celestia and produce more magical elves. Uh. Or they can make more elves, they're just not magical, by opening up the lower courts to interbreed with the, the noble courts. Hmm. Yeah. And if the, if the attack comes quickly enough, if it is a surprise, they may hope to deal with the island piecemeal. It would take time for any factions to organize and unite, and not all of the members of this island are on good terms with each other. But nothing brings together enemies as much as a greater enemy. True, but even still, that takes time. If an enemy can strike fast and hard enough, they can take it apart piecemeal before any major uh, defense is mounted. Yep, and one elf with 500 years of training can easily outdo uh, an equal group of, let's say, like, 100 men. Supposedly. Supposedly. I I will mention that uh, to Bia, um, that that uh, cousin I saw... He's probably still okay. Probably. Hopefully she hasn't been subverted by the other courts. Anyway. But uh yeah. Yep. The problem with the the problem with it is is that everybody's arguing their best interest. Mm hmm. Everyone thinks they're right. Yep. And they all have legitimate reasons for thinking that too. Because on one hand, you're facing the extinction, extinction of your kind. On the other hand, you're facing the loss of the most important thing you have in surviving in that world. Yeah. It's take over our continent or lose the Feywild. Exactly. So therein lies the rub. That's why they've been arguing for centuries. <laughs> Let's just hope nobody else knows I'm here. Well, you know, three people can keep a secret if two of them are dead. Yeah, I really don't want to kill my cousin. She was nice to me. Mm. By virtue of not trying to kill you. Whatever you say, princess. No, she helped me escape. Oh, okay. So, now that you guys have... At least most of the picture, you think. Yeah. And now the Oaken Words hands, the Oaken, I'm sorry, the Oaken Hands <laughs> Words, Oaken Words hands, yep. comes back to mind in that he says that is the greatest challenge that you can face at the moment to prove to Kalim is uniting your family. Unite the clans. Well, uniting my family and then uniting the people. So, yeah. Unite the clans. I'm mean, going to probably have to ask more questions about this later because it still doesn't make quite sense, but that might also be because I've had too much rum or too much vodka. <laughs> I'm going to go with that that uh, option right there that you've had too much vodka. I don't you've think it's it wrong. That. <laughs> it's because usually I drink rum. I'm used to it being rum, so it's weird to say vodka. <laughs> uh huh. You keep telling yourself that. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure I know why I'm confused, but it's something I can ask later and just okay. have it clarified. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. Well, how would you guys like to approach this? Uh, I would like to not. Well, I don't think there's a not option in this. We need. We need to find out what is going on with the Oakenhan, with Kalim. 
We need to find... But that sounds like we need to deal with the elves. Okay. It would also help us disappear for a while, which would be good for some of us. Specifically you. Mostly you. Well, they're... Partially me, but mostly you. <laughs> I will not deny that. I mean, I think we could beat the shit out of Hayden, but that's not the problem. It's not the problem, is he is merely... Who he represents is more the problem. Exactly. Get, which, that's you, not me, so... I'm trying out loud. Just as a quick timeout, is everybody okay with midnight as a closing time? Sure. Yeah. Okay. That gives us a good three, three hours. Yeah. That only gives us half an hour left, though. That's okay. Again, you guys have so far... At this point, you really just got to decide how you want to approach this. Because, Lexi, you do know how to get back to your city. I do. So we pull out maps, and we're like, well, looks like we've got a journey then. I mean, the, the Elderwood is not that far away from where we are now. It should be a couple days' journey, and then uh, into the wood. It's a big forest. Yes. I mean, big. It takes up probably about a quarter of the landmass. I, I've been of, of, of Australia. <laughs> I've been in it before, yes. Not that deep. I, I can still see the road. Bia, you've been in part of it. I've also probably been in part of it. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody at some point has been, except for Ferris. It's like, from TriPoint to Stromness, there's no way you're not going, like getting near it to uh what should we call it this place over here whose name escapes me lord ness lord ness yep that's also a good way to get to king's crest over the mountains uh there's a lot of logging camps there so you've probably gone through it on your mercenary uh caravan trips mm -hmm. it is the single largest source of wood obviously that's not going to kill you when you go into it as readily <laughs> At least not as mystically, you just died to elves, not an unknown supernatural force that no one knows what the fuck it is. Man, I'm having flashbacks to the Pulp Cthulhu game. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Welcome to, trying to make some of these places. Masthead. But, I take it, how do you guys want to go? It's up to you as characters. Well, how, how do we get uh, Miss Athalia, uh, how do we exactly we get to your kingdom? Um, you go to the glade of the Mistwood. That. You do that. <laughs> and that is where? Isn't that in the um... the Elderwood, yep. The Elderwood, but where is it? Somewhere in the middle? Yep, somewhere in the middle. Well, okay. it is... Essentially, you have to be an elf to find it. Well, gee, yeah. do I count? No. Yes, you still do. You're still technically an elf. You're no. You're a dark elf. <laughs> but you wouldn't know it about it since you were raised around it. Huh? Of course not. Why you gotta make it a race thing, Sarge? <laughs> Always a race thing when it comes to D&D. &D. I'm about to it say, really yeah, we kind of have that here. It's because I'm a dragonborn, isn't it? That's that's what this is about. No, it's because you're a dick. It's because I'm a black dragonborn, isn't it? <laughs> uh, At least in D&D, &D, racism makes sense because so, there actually are other races. Yeah. So, are we gonna go help Princess regain her throne? Swear to God, you call me princess one more time and I'm punching you. Go oh, for it, princess. princess. Don't dent your hand. We might break him now. Okay. Can we have some wings over here? Mm-hmm. <sighs> mm-hmm. <sighs> 
just waiting for her to cast like dissident whispers at either of us. <laughs> I wish I wasn't Dixie. I just realized my mic's been on mute this entire time. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> you need to stop that. I You're thought you guys Maddie. were being assholes, and I was like, oh man. Not Maddie. And then I... Okay. So new new rule. When game starts, everyone get off of push to talk. I put it on push to talk, I'm so I didn't on have push to talk all the time. I stepped on the button. Could I have a new button that oh, mutes my mic? Stop. I was going to say, I think I might know a, sh a way to get there more efficiently if I know where in the wood it is. I was asking Athalia, where about in the woods on the map do we need to be? And I was wondering why she wasn't responding to me. <laughs> <laughs> it explains so much. Okay. We don't have to walk most of the way there. We can take the dark shore down and take a tributary most of the way into the woods. Yeah, but Probably. That's, that is literally going all the way around the continent. Like I mean, it's to... up to the... Mm -hmm. it, it flows from north to south, right? Yeah. I mean, the... is teleportation a thing? Uh, yeah, we've done it before. Yeah. We could ask yeah. to pay paid to be set up to Silver Shore and take a boat down. That might be the quickest way... If you happen to have a skilled enough captain who happens to know the route quite well. That's a big if. You know anyone like that? I might. Or any of that ship ashore. No. Also, also it was in... is mm -hmm. very expensive. I'm getting the feeling that Lord Drax, maybe we can bribe him? I, we can I, think, I think we'll ask Lord Drax as a servant. Drax is still... We'll ask Gabriel. Maybe he can get a discount. I don't know, it's an option. If not, there's that little uh, lake there. We could take the lake and, and sail that down as Go well. From Whitestone Lake and sail it on in. Yeah, either, I don't know that route as well, but yeah, either way, it. I think we can take, you know, water part of the way. Well, why, why, don't we talk to, why don't we talk to Gabriel and, uh, wow, I went very high there. Uh, why don't we talk to Gabriel and see what he can arrange and then make our plans from there? True. Since uh, okay. this does involve after we ha tracks. sleep off our drunk, that is. Speak for yourself. I <laughs> am perfectly in control of my faculties. <laughs> faculties. He says he struggles to sit up straight. <laughs> faculties. <laughs> See, it's how many fingers am I holding up? It's funny because faculties is another name for professors and the like and but it is also <laughs> it is yeah awesome. uh i think fluffy here needs to sleep <laughs> faculties <laughs> i boop his snoot for good measure <laughs> to see how drunk he is uh he doesn't respond he i don't think <laughs> yep. i don't think he can feel his face right now yeah, that's three solid ports in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. we just need a boat. Dust boat. And there's going to be a... Don't you have a problem with water and storms right now? Not right now. I haven't made a decision yet. Aren't they going to be a little annoyed if you keep putting it off? No, they didn't tell me I had to do it right this second. They really want to be a boat in a boat with you, though. Gods I mean, are fickle creatures. Yeah, oh, and I oh. can't make a decision yet. So maybe they'll try to... Make, I haven't made a decision yet, so they might be trying to bribe me. We might get better luck, for all I know. Or they might try to scare me, in which case we'll have worse. Eh, it's a bit of a crap sheet. I'm Sarge. interested in finding out. Yes, sir. Is there any history about how drow are treated? Uh, or... Well, not in the water. Where we're going to help out dear princess. Okay. Drow are not welcome there. Drow are not welcome. <laughs> Good enough. Fuck it would. Drow. It would be a very interesting occurrence. We'll put it that way. Hmm. A drow has never been there. So how do you know we're not welcome? Know of? Goliath probably haven't either. It should be fun. <laughs> probably not Dragonborn. Yep. Spice up the place. <laughs> Lexi, you're going to be inviting all kinds of interesting events. <laughs> well, maybe I can take over then. 
<laughs> See, princess. now you're thinking like a princess. I'm not a no, princess. No, that's an though. empress. Empress, there you exactly. go. Exactly. That's my goal. Warrior go. empress. Friggin' nobles, the lot of ya. All right. We'll call it here. Everybody goes to sleep oh. off their respective hangovers. Uh, I didn't get that show. drunk. That's right. Respective hangovers. <laughs> um, I'm cool. Upset. Well, that was pretty fun. I'm, I'm sorry we didn't get... I had an encounter planned. I'm sorry we didn't quite get to it, but I was I was really enjoying the role play with everybody. So, um, The fact that everybody actually got to talk about at least most of their backstories. I don't know. I feel like everybody bonded over that. So we will go with the, the Sarge tried and true method, which apparently a lot of people have copied now, which is awesome. Uh, of asking what everybody liked and what they didn't like the session. Let's start with the top. Joshua. Dang it, mm-hmm. it's always the top. Well, yeah, it's always I, the top. Sometimes I want to go first. Okay, Lexi, why don't you go first? Uh, oh, okay. Yay! Yay. Um, I really, really did like hearing everybody's backstory. I feel like it'll make us closer as, like, a group. Um... Except for Varys, because Varys is a butt. I've got a, I've got an air of mystery to maintain. <laughs> I'm about to say, All right. there's still some backstory that has not been given. Oh, and yeah. that's fine, but we shared enough to make it feel like we're going to come together as a group. Yes. Um, the only thing I didn't like was that we started late, because I would have liked a little bit more time to play. Yep. And that was that was my fault. I tried to get as much as I could done over the last few days, but it's been really rough at work. So no, I apologize that's... for that. That's my fault. I will try that's... to be a bit better prepared. Fine. It's <laughs> it was half an hour, but you know, that was an extra half hour we could have played. Totally understand. I'm not taking it offensively either. It's just okay, something good. I need to work on. I can take criticism. I'm a, I'm a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, he is a big boy. I've met him. Yes. In person. <laughs> Getting Close. slower. I've lost 15 pounds. Yay! <laughs> yeah? So um, it's a good kind of big boy where you're like, oh, man, that's a that's a dude that I want around. Look look at this lad. Absolutely. You know, get it. <laughs> I want him to go in front of me into crowds because then I can walk behind him without problems. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very good at that. Speaking of, Garrett, why don't you go next? Oh, sweet. I also enjoyed all the role play. What I didn't enjoy was that it's been like what two months since we played, it feels like. That's my that's my good and my bad. I think it's been a month. Because we it played feels yeah, like played. an eternity. <laughs> it really does. I that was uh yep, that's something else we're working on too is I think now that summer is almost over, we should be able to get back to a fairly regular schedule, no problem. Yeah, summers are always. And rough. now that you've said it, yeah, right. Um, you've jinxed it. Okay. Well, so before... I already know there's a weekend in September that might be a problem. Probably, we'll work on it then. Uh, I'll work more on scheduling alternative yeah. days too. Once because... Josh, once Josh kills the stream, I'll talk about it a little bit. Oh, that's fine. Um. Just as a heads up, starting on Monday, I'm going to be switching over to nights at my job. So yeah. if this falls on, on uh, a Saturday where I work, I will we'll have to do it further during the day. Um, so probably start at like noon and end at like four or five. Okay. But we can discuss more of that later in case that works or doesn't work for people. Um, but I will be starting work regardless of when we play at 730 in the, in the afternoon. Or at night, technically. So, more time to play uh, and more frequently. Yes, I agree. Totally. <laughs> uh, John, why don't you go next? Uh, something good. Um, I always like uh, enjoying uh, Varys' slightly more bristly sides. And now that we're learning that, you know, members of the party are, are of a nicer birth, it uh, it'll be nice to get back to some of that, in a not totally antagonistic way. Always Something I didn't like, honestly, I I was zoned out for about half a session and don't feel like I really missed much of anything. Okay. Um, 
I I tried to pay attention and I couldn't tell you a thing that happened for the first two hours of session. Okay. So more more to engage you. Okay. Um maybe break up the info dumps a little bit. Cause it kind of felt like it was just thing to thing to thing. Okay. Got it. I can do that. Maddie. Oh geez. Um uh, thing I liked. Um yes, more. Uh I really like that we were all interacting. Um, I really liked when we really started role playing and all that other stuff and I love I love the witty banter. I love Varys and his absolute sass mastery as it always makes a lot of fun to foil off of. He's like the human lancer of this group. So it's great to, to be able to play off of that all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes the role play easily easy. So I like that everyone's especially I love I love that you talked more with Alia. I mean Lexi. Yes. Yay. Oh. I had interactions with the fabulousness yeah. that pleases me. I want more of that. Um, things I didn't like. Um, I'd like more player-initiated interactions. No, no offense, Sarge. Okay. Um, I, I like when the group interacts and such, but I think I'd like to see how we decide to, to do our interactions. While suggestions are nice sometimes, Sometimes it's also kind of fun to see what what people come up with to resolve the solution, um, what what craziness we come up to. Obviously, if we're staring awkwardly at the screen for five minutes, there's dead air and nobody's breathed so much as you know that that becomes a necessity. But yeah, that that's gotcha. my opinion. Okay. And also, not enough. Want more? Forever. <laughs> Just chain you all the tables and make you play forever. And Josh. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Uh, one thing I liked is uh, uh, where our backgrounds are actually starting to be revealed. So I'm actually actually somewhat excited about that. Actually knowing uh a little bit more about these mysterious figures who I share a table with. Uh, downside is uh. Yeah, I think the lightness thing. Uh, if we, I, I'm st- I, near the end. I was starting to zone out just because I was getting a little tired. <laughs> okay. Yep. I apo- again, apologies for that, but we can work on that. I'm cool. an old, I'm an right. old well, man, Sarge. I can't stay up late. Um, for me, I. I think I'll just mirror everybody else. It's it was great to see the role play and people actively, you know, both conceding some of their backstory, but also keeping some things back. Um, because for me as a GM, I like revealing those things in a dramatic way, uh, such as those things coming back to bite everybody in the ass, not just that one person. Um, and I have a pretty interesting way of doing it for all of you. So it's it'll be fun to see how everybody's like, wait a minute, you didn't tell us that? <laughs> so that'll be fun. Um, the thing I didn't like, um, personally, it felt... There were a couple points in time I felt like I had to drag some things out because it did get a bit quiet at the table. People weren't kind of interacting. Um, but I guess sitting on the other side of the table it feels different so I'll, I'll keep a better eye on that for myself I, I don't want to be the the person that consistently suggests things and tries to steer the story and what the characters do I, I really don't try to do that um, also it's been months that's probably the reason why yeah, yeah that's mm. the other part <laughs> um, all of us had to find our characters again <laughs> yeah exactly so I will I will do my best to take all the critique in in and improve upon it i know it's been a difficult few months for this game so i appreciate you guys sticking with it and and continuing to come back and and play and have fun and interact um i do want to take this as far as we possibly can and the fact that we're doing this more story oriented instead of um combat oriented is actually really cool for me 
So don't worry, you guys are getting XP in the background for all of this stuff. So it's not like you're doing it and you're not getting any rewards on keeping track um, behind the scenes. Ooh, there's a laser light show going on. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, we will, I guess we'll end it here. Uh, we'll try and pick it up when, and we'll talk about it afterward, after we get off stream a little bit more. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Say goodnight, stream. Night, night stream. Night. Night.